Right. Uh, you guys are still in Korbaska. Um, and this is right after the events of last session. Considering you started that day pretty early, I'd say it's probably around noonish. That's early. Yeah, I mean, you guys, you guys, if you guys specifically went to the inn and rested up and woke up really early just so that you'd have plenty of daylight for the castle. Oh, right. That's yeah. right. So that I'd, say, took... I'd say you spent yeah. a few hours in there, came back down to the city, uh, yeah. and now it's probably around noon. So you yeah. guys have had a long day already. But, uh, and as, as you're uh, kind of recovering from the events that just took place, uh, Horikawa, uh, Colleen Drake's friend. Uh, actually, you see her approach your group from uh, from the main road that cuts through town. Hmm. Oh, great. What's she doing here again? <laughs> <laughs> Pretty good first reaction. <laughs> I imagine she's not in her shot yet, so. Now's, now's the time to be talking all the shit. Yeah, I, I give a half like, uh, wave. How, how far away is she? Like, uh... hey, don't give away before she spots us. Let's stitch, uh, let's stitch this place before she blows it up. I mean, you guys, you guys are like <laughs> right in the middle of the city. You guys have uh, just left the chapel. Um, so it's and this town is not terribly big to begin with. It's it's kind of like a small village. Uh, so basically you're you're on the main stretch of road and you see her coming from basically uh the other end of town which again is not terribly big yeah. basically a few uh, small crowds of uh, people going about their daily business in between you and her is she coming from the direction of daventry or is real uh, from from the direction of daventry unless she wanted to wrap around the city for some reason no makes sense this is high nerd okay carriage. i'm gonna wait and say let's let's head on to zreal then or riddleport and uh no. Let her blow. Them. Yeah, I, I don't think I can condone that. We can't have her stay here and blow even more stuff up. Just gonna do it whether we're here or not. Are there sewers in this town? Uh, as far as you can tell, there's there's no like manhole covers or anything. There's no evidence good. that you've That's seen. Good. I'm pretty sure she'll just set the shops on fire. Which is already bad enough. Yeah, and that is an actual legit possibility, considering we saw her do that. No, you never saw her actually set a shop oh, on fire. that's true. Well, we saw a shop that was on fire, so, you know. Yeah. Was... I, th I think you, need, you don't it have any good. sort of solid proof on that, though. But she did. But she did nobody, say she was going to get her bombs. Her light the hotel on fire, either. Fire just I, seems to happen to I show saw her put, put the hotel on fire. Didn't I? I was with her. No, you came upstairs and the room was already on fire. Yeah. Mm. Also, you encouraged me to blow up that sewer, so just saying. Yeah, <laughs> but this, this place is nice. Uh, well, I imagine she she's getting closer. Are you guys going yeah, mean... to keep moving or and like casually ignore her? Or... I'm going to keep moving. It's Shun. <laughs> no. I, I, I've got to keep moving. All right, so you guys just all hop back on the cart and start heading out of town? Is, is that what's going on? No. I mean, she didn't ignore her, I guess. He was eh, no. up on this mission with us. She, we might as well ask her if she still wants to come, I guess. I mean, she's informed about this uh, quest that we're on, and uh, we might Am just, I? Uh, uh, you were there when we were in, in the crypt, right, right? Okay, so the the grander quest. Yeah, basically. Yes. So I imagine at this point, while you guys are kind of hemming and hawing, she's actually made it up within earshot of the cart at this point. Yep. I'll wave, I guess. Yeah. How, how do you look? Do you have like an excited face, or are you just like, "Oh, hi! I didn't expect to see you here." Like, what kind of how are, how is this wave? How are you presenting yourself? You see Weimar's gif in the general chat. Yes. You see the 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 starry eyed Cherno or whatever. Yes, Sakura. That 
Saki or whatever. I don't okay. know. Okay. So maybe, maybe a little bit of a uh, little bit of bloodlust and intensity going on. Sure. Okay. Do you guys react at all, or are you uh, just gonna stand there? I stare her down. No, no, no. I guess. Uh... Well, so you decided to show up after all. You missed the uh, excitement in the manor. I saved a parrot. Good you killed the parrot. You. Well, I saved it from slavery. Do you still have its carcass? Yeah, yeah, I, yeah, I do actually. Wait, did you guys actually keep the <laughs> parrot carcass? Well, yeah, that's why I'm I, asking. <laughs> yeah, I, uh, I think I never threw it away. <laughs> Sanitary, yeah. So, so you just pull out this burnt parrot carcass and show it to I'm her? I'm gonna or... check my inventory first. You're going to what? Check my inventory. Uh, yeah, it's still there. Charred parrot. Ah, <laughs> uh, yeah, I bring it up. Yeah. So he's sure is saved. <laughs> Very saved. I uh, grab I... him. Okay, here you go. And um, I say we need to give him a proper burial. You guys are right next to the graveyard. I, I point to the graveyard. I'm gonna go dig up a grave. <laughs> oh, we can <laughs> just ask one of the ladies there. They buried a man for us already. Oh. Fair enough. I'll go and I say the bird needs to be buried. Uh, the the uh, the the priestess who you approach, she 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 listens to your words and she her face looks very concerned, and then she looks down at your hands and her face becomes a very different kind of concerned. Um, says, "Uh, oh, okay, yes, um, very well. Um, certainly, we'll we'll have a quick burial right here. Is 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 uh, is this little plot okay?" And she points to to a empty section of the graveyard right next to the fence. I'm not going with him, and I'm not dealing with this stupidity. <laughs> <laughs> she, uh, she performs some basic spells in order to move dirt out of the way and, uh, for a proper burial and places, places the bird, the charred, uh, parrot carcass inside, uh, and then casts another, uh, quick spell in order to refill up the grave with dirt and uh, she she gives a, a quick prayer and a blessing over the grave. A, a little uh, little clerical divine light comes from her hands and rests on the grave. She says, "I I do hope that uh, I do hope that you find uh, I, I I do hope that you can move on from this, and I hope that your lovely animal companion see you in the future." This is the parent, right? Yeah. Yeah, you, you, yeah, my duck is still fine. I, I, uh, this just, just so the priestess uh, implies that animals and uh, people go to the same place <laughs> after correct. that. Yeah, uh, crap. What what religion were these guys? Who did these guys follow? I, I gotta be consistent here. Go back to gods and pantheons. It was definitely it was, it was definitely a, a good uh, aligned god or goddess. Uh, I think it was Mitra. That sounds sounds familiar, right? Yeah. I think it's I think it was Mitra. So, yeah. I say, don't worry. I saved him. Uh, she Good she looks at you. you slightly in in yet another different concerned look. Um, and says, uh, I I hope that you find comfort in this. And, uh, I say. We're done here. And I turn and I say, "Come on, duck, let's go." Is, is the is the duck following you behind, or kind of squatting on your shoulder? He's a waddling. All right. And we strut out. Cool. Uh, the party's like right there, so you guys all saw this happen. Yes. Yep. And I'm gonna say, "Great." So, why are you in this town? I have no idea. <laughs> so you because just wandered about and ended up here, I guess? I, I think that's canonically what happened, I mean, like, <laughs> like, if you want uh, a logical I mean... reason, you did kind of blow up part of Daventry, so it wouldn't make sense for you to just kind of go away from there. 
Yeah, e even you recognize that you're a little on the wanted side there at this point. I mean, there's like two roads going from Daventry, uh, east or west, and you just so I don't take the east road and follow it all the way here. I guess, sure. That is what I say. I say, well, I liberated that parrot in Daventry, so I came to look for more creatures to liberate. Uh, you do notice, by the way, that uh, the party now has a cart with two horses. Oh, dear. That they're all sitting in. Or maybe oh, leaning against. Dear. I'm in it. Uh, I'm going to look over and I say, so, I guess start talking to the horses to see if they're happy or not. Uh, the horses uh, seem pretty fine. Uh, they don't they don't seem uncomfortable. They seem That's perfectly fine happy. For now. It seems like they've been decently fed. I'm gonna glare at people, but it seems fine for now. They were a bit uncomfortable in this morning, but we uh, just took them a bit down the hill where they were more at ease. Hey, when they were afraid of the vampire castle, we bothered to you no know, bring them away from it. Exactly. Treated them real nice. That is very true. Well, look, you remember that guy Bakerton, right? He told us about these world destroying artifacts and stuff, and now uh, we're. Uh, basically on a quest to collect all of them, and since you already know about all of this, I suppose you might as well help us. After all, it was destroyed, uh, uh, where are all these animals to live in? Define destroy. Good turn question! How, do, how would they destroy the world? I I basically turn it into sugar, I would imagine. So, a... basically, uh, you recall from how he described the artifacts that uh, basically they they kind of loosely took energy from the surrounding environment in order to perform their magic, which could potentially suck the life force out of uh, large quantities of people at once if manipulated uh, in poor ways with all of them combined. So and what about the people. animals? So you use people, but really it's like all living things, really more. Yeah, it could, could, it could could turn the world into a wasteland covered in sugar and frosting. But yep. no one to eat it. That hmm. is the most sad part. The most ironic of our Megadons. You remember the exact example he used was imagine <laughs> imagine having a large metropolis, uh, just everyone killed in order to make ten billion pies. Well, I wouldn't mind that as long as it's just a metropolis. But now imagine the metropolis was the world. With mm. all the animals within. See, that's the problem. The problem is not it's not like an impeding or megadon is gonna happen now. It's the potential for one. I wonder if we could target it. Maybe. Just configure it to only drain from humans. He did mention that it could be used as a directed weapon by a skilled enough uh, spellcrafter. Oh, well that sounds lovely. I mean, right, I'll you're not you. sure <laughs> to what extent, but it did seem like that was what he was afraid of. I'm not sure our goals are completely aligned, but might as well. <laughs> yeah. Uh, like, step one, collect them. That far, we are on the same page. After that, <laughs> uh, we have the discussion later. Yeah, that's step why we're here two. in the first place, to make step sure that our goal is Find a dragon to give them to. Why would the dragon, dragon know you say? Because no, dragons are magic things. They know magic -y magic magic. I mean, the I guess sufficiently magic, powerful magic. dragon might as, I... could be as uh, powerful enough to destroy the world by itself, so it wouldn't be any more dangerous if it had these artifacts, if we're going by that logic. But it's more efficient. <laughs> ah, this isn't going to end well. Anyway, should we get going? Probably. I just have a realization to this you need all of them to make a like a dangerous thing, right? Mm -hmm. What if we just destroyed one of them? Uh you haven't tried that. Like I don't, Frankly, I don't want to. As a magician, I know I'm not nearly good enough yet, but yeah, you, you are aware that a lot of particularly powerful magical items do become very difficult to destroy and that you might not be strong enough to do so yet. 
but like down the road, um, it's something worth trying, honestly. Or if I mean, you find a yeah. volcano, could be worth an attempt, even if it wouldn't destroy the artifact, it would make it really hard to uh, get to it. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, it would probably make it pretty hard. Hard as it's just, steel. It's just a thought that came, but yeah, it's something for later, I guess. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mm -hmm. I look forward to seeing your attempts. I've got some ideas. Good. We'll, we'll try. I love once ideas. we get there. First, we find Mount Mordor. Then we drop it into the lava. Problem solved. I bet a dragon might be able to help us destroy one. We should give one to them. You're not wrong. This is a thing. Uh, I, I'm not sure we can have a discussion with the dragon, though. Well, we have oh, a kobold on the team. Yeah, I mean, I can talk draconic, but I well, don't... Ask am I. Yeah, I, yeah. I good for you. But I'm not uh, sure a dragon is such a good conversation partner, is what I'm saying. I punch you. <laughs> I'm about to hit. I, I want to try reflex uh, dodge. Uh, I would be. No, no, this is versus AC. Flat footed AC at that. Okay, uh, 14. She's just straight up sucker say, punching you. Okay. I'd, I'd say, why are you punching? Why are you trying to defend a dragon if you're really that mad against all sent sapient creatures then uh yeah dragons are counted as people too dragons aren't people they have four legs and wings well that's just racist <laughs> <laughs> i say yes seriously in 3.5 rules there are actually rules for dra dragons can use basically every piece of equipment slightly modified that an average person can use this isn't that's, a matter of rules this is a matter silly. of like opinions and philosophies clashing. Uh -huh. Are you actually going to roll that uh, attack roll? Uh, what is that? What is my bonus to that? Uh, that would be uh, base attack bonus plus plus melee, or plus. I never spell. leveled up to level two, but that's fine. You guys are still level two, right? Yep. Yeah. That's fine. I'll just be level one for this session and do it later. That's fine. Base attack bonus, you said? Base attack bonus plus strength. Ugh. Okay. Nope. Where's... No, I, I imagine that, uh, I imagine that, uh, Belmere mostly just sits there and, like, the, the punch, like, hits his armor, but, like, just, he's not really feeling it beyond that. Nah. Yeah, that, that was somebody punching my armor, all right. I have my the dusting really clacking him. Slap. Yeah, pre pretty much. It was basically as effective as a slap. Yep. Are, are, are you just going to take that? Like, yeah, oh, I guess I, 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 guess I, I don't even. Me. I, I don't even bother. <laughs> all right. Yeah. So, uh, do, did you guys want to do anything else in town, or did you want to head out? Uh, yeah, might as well head out. All right, so uh, you guys were headed to Riddleport, correct? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Might as well. We might want to make sure to read. So what happened while I was gone? I actually never did get a. Uh, um, basically, to figure this out in session. Yeah, I'll let somebody else explain. To That's make fine. a long story short, uh, there's a mansion here that belonged to a vampire. Where you can just point to it; it's it's looming over this. Yeah. Uh, up on the cliff. <laughs> We went up there and we found uh, one of the, the treasures that was kept there previously by a vampire that's being jailed in this town. Uh, he's in he's in jail for for a life sentence. So I mean, the well, vampires never die. Fortunately, we didn't really find anything else useful other than the ring that I gave to Velmer, I believe. Uh, and there was a locked door we don't know how to access to. Uh, but we, we know we, did, we don't know where the key is. Yeah, and we can't open it. It's too trapped. Uh, hmm. Otherwise, was basically just get in there, activate basically every single trap in the mansion except for one, and uh, 
Yeah, that took like half a day. You killed the the vampire though, right? No, he's still in jail. He's we a cool guy. Ghosts. Oh, vampires are the worst kind of humans though. Uh, he he's not I a human. To, he's agree. a vampire. There's a difference. Humans are a very tiny subsection of sentient beings. Yeah, there's certainly mm. a lot of them. Yeah, I, I wouldn't say tiny, but yeah, there are more than humans in this world, I guess. I mean... Not as tiny as kobolds and halflings. Like, look at this, enti this entire group. In this conversation, there is one human. And it's the one that doesn't you, like humans. if I may? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Human is, is, is my catch-all for, for you people. I, th I think we are actually talking about this last session. What's what's like the good terminology for sentient humanoid creature? Uh, Feels like it's there's a term missing in the English language filthy for that. Filthy human. Just, just put the qualifier of filthy on there and that covers more. Mm -hmm. I'll, I'll buy that. Human refers to humans. Filthy human refers to all sentient two-legged creatures subhumans i civilized races filthy civvies <laughs> ah there you go i actually think that, that might be a good what about monkeys monkeys can survive that might be racist sufficiently advanced and i mean what about birds they have two legs some of them are really smart do they, so do they build there? buildings? Nests? Kind of count? <laughs> do they build banks? Uh, banks specifically, what? huh? Uh, that, I, that, 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 I, that, I mean, magpie like to steal shiny things like money, and then they keep them in their house. But can you take um, a high interest loan from a magpie? Yes. Have you guys, um, have you guys ever played Mass Effect? Because we can distinguish no. by uh, which races can do calculus. <laughs> what? Is that is that a real thing in Mass Effect? Well, one, one of the characters uh, is a scientist, and he, he he was talking about moral quandaries, and he decided that if a race can do calculus, he won't experiment on it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, <laughs> that's a that's a way to differentiate, I guess. Uh huh. Can't can't like crocodile technically have the brain capacity to do calculus? That doesn't sound right. I doubt but if, it. But if if you can like find the study, I absolutely want to read that because that sounds fascinating. Where did I read this? I mean, animals can do stuff like route optimization and stuff. So yeah, if that's good enough. Uh, what were we doing before we started this conversation? I forgot. Oh well, yeah, we were... We started from uh, Colleen asking, like, wait, so seriously, what did happen while I was out? Oh yeah, right. So yeah, traps, ghosts, and uh, not much treasure. Nope. Yep. I mean, we made the vampire very happy. That's kind of a treasure in itself. Duh. Friendship yeah. was real treasure all along. <laughs> <laughs> we, gave, we gave him his uh, magic mirror back that had a friend or whatever in it. I rolled my eyes. Hey. 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 Yeah, uh, no, yes, no. The magic mirror's name was Alfonso. Good for him. And we, and we gave him a bunch of uh, books. Of his uh, uh, books on a planetary... Uh, on. Yeah, astrology or something books. Yeah, it, was, it was a lot of planetary yeah. and planar studies. It was, it was up in his uh, observatory. The mirror guy there. had to see them. Damn it. Well. So the, um, I did add a little extra, um, so on the world map, I'll be adding things as it makes sense to add them uh, basically uh i there's a road there that you see that wasn't there before 
Mm -hmm. Ah, that tiny one. Yeah. Yeah. It's it's a less traveled road, but it'll probably save you guys like a day and a half at least. Um, Where the hell are we? Uh, uh, you guys the are pie. The pie at Corvasca. Yep. The pie party. The pie. Yeah, the pie is the group icon, naturally. Oh. Okay. I don't know what that was. I just thought that was a place that got turned into a pie. Well, yeah. It's... <laughs> Why? No, Why? no. I'll, I'll make sure that's a very distinctive pie icon when a city gets turned to a pie. Why is that real less traveled? Would we know? Uh, simply because there's a lot more traffic between Zreal and Daventry than there is from mm. Daventry to Riddleport. I guess that makes sense. But it's um, it's still a perfectly well established road. It's just has a lot less traffic, and could save you guys a lot of time. Let's go kill the immortal gnome. <laughs> that that's might not well quite be... yet. That's a bit further that south. Might... Oh, that might as well happen. Mm -hmm. But the go golem's on the way, so... Have so your to to that is very useful at all times. I ask if I can pet the duck. I, I, I glare... I say, okay, it would be nice. Look, I'm the guy with the fish bird. I know how to deal with animals. That's true. That's true. Okay, you can pet it. Yes. What is pineapple up to anyways right now? Is uh, just sitting right. on your head? Yep. Cool. I'm going to have my duck hang out with it. <laughs> just stack your duck on top of pineapple on top <laughs> of Nava's head. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. You, you might... Not that you weren't there, I think. The the part was a guy who went to the west towards El Alondras. So he went to the east to pick up all the MacGuffins in that direction before he could get to them. Oh yeah, so if you stick with us, eventually we'll be able to avenge the parrot owner. Well, the parrot... What? That's a point. Yep. Like, it's not gonna be now, but like, he's a wizard, so it's gonna be hard to deal. So our goal is to get everything else beforehand so we have a bit of an advantage. Look, if you hang with us, well, I promise to leave you the killing blow. How about that? Okay. Sounds good. Sounds like a good uh, party contract to me. I'm Depending on how the battle goes, it's, it can be hard to guarantee that you get it, but oh well. well I mean, well, I mean, of course we, things... We can try. Happen. Yeah. Like, that's a bridge we're going to cross eventually, but... Just everybody hit him with non-lethal damage, and then she can coup de grom at the end. Problem solved. Yeah, I guess. Coup de grom who? Oh, the no? The wizard. We'll just let a ranger fight the solo uh, a wizard. It's going to go fine. Uh-huh. Of course. I've read books with that happening. Well, one book. Mr. Orden's origin story. He won. That's true. On. It sounds like uh, you guys are actually ready to leave Corbosca at this point, I assume. Uh, did you guys want to swing by the shops or anything before you left? Uh, I think we did that last time, didn't we? Yeah, you guys ended up doing a lot of shopping in, uh, in I think, in Daventry, and you haven't gotten a lot of gold since then. Right, right. I think we, we planned on buying shovels. We could buy that one last corpse, but then we figured we might as well bring the corpses with, it, with us and then uh, bury him at the church. That's what happens. That's right. You did. So did you actually end up buying a shovel, or was that just something that you talked about? Uh, let me check my inventory. I don't have a shovel in my inventory. From what it's, and it's you can worth. always toss in the wagon inventory. That's true. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but we mostly emptied it out because we sold everything. Yeah. Yeah, I have shovels. Two of them. You, you bought two shovels. Wow. You are super duper prepared. There we go. Now we can right. bury our magic bag somewhere. Yeah, burying is not a good idea. I mean, digging is a hard job, so if two people do it, you know. But at the same time, and a detect magic spell would track it down pretty quickly. Right. No, right. It's no. If we're gonna stash it somewhere, uh, it needs Might to well keep it on us. Up until one of us can find us. Can find some like I don't know. Like eventually, a, 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 a magic bag of some sort. If I ever get to a point where I can like create, literally create a half dimension or something, we'll stash it there. Rope trick. 
Well, oh, yeah, roof crack a lot of good dimension. That's right. A lot That's of good so options tough. for making dimension. Portable hull, too. Who knows? Uh, you might end up with a bag of devouring. Oh, <laughs> man. Oh, oh man. man. A bag of devouring might just sort of, uh, destroy the artifact problem. Yeah. Yeah, that'd be perfect. But then the dragon wouldn't have it. Yeah, you but can put the just... dragon in the bag of devouring so you can get it. <laughs> okay. Good point. That has to be a pretty big bag. Oh. Unless we the shoot dragons. the dragon. Mm. That's the point. I mean, actually, the dragon's a grown-up lizard. He can't handle himself. You actually brought up. Uh, you actually brought up the the pouch of uh, many ingredients. Did you actually investigate it at all? Since uh, since you got it, have you I don't think so. Tinkered no. with it at all? Well, we didn't really have the opportunity, I guess, because we were what eager guess, to uh, get things doing. I mean, you're gonna out? be you're gonna be traveling for the rest of the day, I assume. So you're gonna have yeah, plenty of time on the road. Let's like, like, assuming we're now like, basically, I'm assuming this conversation is happening while our, we're on the road. Yeah, I think that it's safe to assume that yeah. you guys are all sitting on the wagon. Sounds good. Uh, traveling toward Little Port, probably along the smaller road, I assume. Mm, unless anyone has a good reason not to. No. All right. If it, so. if it really does give us a, any ingredients we want or whatever, as the name suggests, uh, I'm going to invest in uh, profession cooking just so I can make uh, rations for everybody. All right, so what, what are you trying to, to do with the pouch? Do you just think to yourself, pull a rabbit like, out I wish of it. I had some ginger? I'm going to try to pull a rabbit out of it. That's the classic trick. You try to pull a rabbit out of it. Uh, your hand goes in and there's nothing. Oh. Okay, I'm going to do a spellcraft on it, see if there's anything we should know. All right. Sounds like a probably a good idea. Oof. All right, you can, you can tell that it's definitely it's definitely conjuration magic. Um, so I, 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 you're, I, I, you're I, guessing that you can pull stuff out of I, it. I'm going to stick my hand in it, and um, after thinking of... Wheat. Uh, Flour, something like that. Yeah, so maybe, just, maybe just. Well, I mean, pull. I can cook whatever you you get out. I have survival. I assume survival can be used for cooking. Uh, uh, yeah, just, uh, yeah. Do I manage to pull a carrot out of the bag? Carrot? Yeah, absolutely. So you it just doesn't pull out like animals and stuff, probably. Then again, I assume that I assume that Don was thinking along the lines of a living rabbit. Yeah, you know, the usual uh, rabbit out of a hat trick. Yeah. Again, and I, I think I'm going to try something else. I think I will grab... Uh, I will try and grab... Uh, uh, chicken bre uh, chick uh, turkey breast. All right, you suddenly have a hunk of slimy meat in your hand. Yep, I that's turkey breast, all right. I, I throw it out on the side of the road. What? That's waste. <laughs> what? <laughs> what are you doing? We can get feeding more. Calm down. He's feeding wild animals. Yes. What he said, feeding wild animals, and I don't want my uh, my hands in slimy meat. No salmonella. It's... So yeah. do you, like, pull your hand out, and then you're like, ew, and toss it away, and, like, start aggressively wiping your hands on your pants? I... Because that, oh. that's what I'm envisioning. I mean, I'm surprisingly impressed with your with your civic duty to the animals. <laughs> so I'm assuming that we cut, we only get like prepared stuff, nothing that we have to butcher or anything. That's that's probably the main uh, criteria. Yeah, basically, yeah, it needs to be food. So it needs to be something you can just. I, don't, I mean, I wouldn't mind touching it if I was cooking something or other, but uh, that was kind of uh, surprising, and um, anything right now. So I just don't want a handful. Of... It's more the shock than the actual grossing out, I'm guessing. Uh, kind of, yeah, sort, kind of, um. Again, it's just we're not planning on cooking anything right now, and I don't want to be carrying around chicken, chicken breast in probably the pro a decent w warm weather out here and have it start to stink. It's uh, it's it's early fall, so yeah, it's still pretty warm out. Yeah. 
Do you think if we ask for gilded bread, we'll get gold? Uh, try it. There's nothing stopping you from trying. That would take a lot of gilded bread, though. There are, uh, like, high-class restaurants where they put actu actually put gold flakes on the meals. Yeah. And on ice Edible cream gold, and on everything yeah. else, basically. Edible gold is a thing, apparently. Oh, it is. Yep. Just don't eat too much of it. You now Cal's a big fan of edible gold. I, if, if there's not edible gold on my dinner, I leave the plate untouched. Oh, is that what our all Patreon money goes to? <laughs> Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so are, are you going to try pulling out a, a loaf of gilded you know bread? What? Yeah, I'll try it. I'm just curious. Uh, you reach your hand in, nothing. Dang it. Okay. So there's a limit. So, so try and just, uh, I guess I'll reach in and try to pull out uh, uh, normal bread. Nothing. Hmm. Okay. So I don't... nothing pre-cooked either. Nothing finished. Yeah, uh, I don't. Know. Okay, that makes sense. It's a it's a bag of ingredients. It's it's the bag of many ingredients. Yeah. I'm curious. I try and uh, pull pull out um some uh, dough for a loaf of bread or something. Some dough? No. Because dough is not an ingredient. You need like the wheat. Here's a, now here's something liquids. Uh, I'm gonna try to put out some milk. All right. Uh, you reach your hand in, and your hand is just inside some milk now. <laughs> can you pour it once your hand is in the milk? Like, can you just change the angle so that it pours? Oh, do you try that? Well, I asked yeah. him to try it. Yeah. Yeah. So you start you start pouring out, and suddenly milk is filling up your cart. <laughs> <laughs> you could have done that outside, but okay. <laughs> So I don't know. Gross uh, my hand in there, well yeah. done. Roll me, roll me a raw wisdom check. See if you're actually pouring it in the cart or not. Uh, wisdom is. And during all yes. of this, I, I'm mostly just copying the last few spells from the Wizards Pirate Book. Yep. Pirate Book. Yeah, spell book. <laughs> oh yeah, you're, you're absolutely <laughs> pouring this in. No, no, no. I made it time. Oh, oh okay. yeah, that's just a one, I think, yeah. <laughs> a one do 20. One do 20. <laughs> oh, wow. Okay, no, you were super on top of this. Like, you, you almost did it, and then you, like, slap yourself for being an idiot, and then you pour it out over the cart. Keep. I want to see if it just goes infinitely. Like, if it can have an infinite pouring of something. Yeah, you're going along, and you're just leaving this, this line of milk behind you. It just keeps going. This is fascinating. <laughs> This is going to be the rest of the session, isn't it? You're just going to leave a trail trying to see of what stupid for your things we can get out of it. You're just going to keep going to see how long it will go? Well, like, if it goes on for like a minute straight or something, I'm just going to assume it's just going to go on for as long as we keep it going. Yeah, you keep it going for a minute straight, and it's it still goes. Well, local cats are going to be happy. <laughs> So you, you have a long trail of milk that you left on the road. Uh, some of the travelers that you pass by give you weird looks. Um, <laughs> hey, yeah. uh, milk, milk is a natural thing to find. <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's right, you are Canadian. Yeah, that's my Canadian joke of the session. Thank you, everyone. All right, so uh, do you want to try anything else uh, with, with the bag of many ingredients or I, I anything else before... Great, I, I, I'm gonna see if I can, uh, can pour out some like uh, cooking sherry or something like that. Uh, yeah, you you start envisioning some cooking sherry and you give the bag a pour and sure enough, it's pouring out cooking sherry. Let's flood the world. Well, we can have boo Well, we can have a booze, sort of. Is cooking sherry actually alcoholic? Yeah, uh, you could also uh, the red wine is also a common ingredient, wrong. so maybe you could get some red wine. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure that's what Thomas uh, Bakerton had in mind when he created it, but hey. <laughs> I thought he's Bakerton is like at least 50 miles away. He doesn't care. I'm just saying well, we it... a lot of house with this if ever we need to. Basically. 
I uh, see. I think we should just send it to. I need water. I'm gonna try it one more thing. I'm gonna see if it, it, I can get water pouring out of it. Uh, sure enough, you give it a pour, and water comes out. What is one of these bold that... line things that it, it, could be if... ingredient? I don't think we know where to. We we now have a f infinite jug of of a bag of water. Very gonna say Alien must be destroyed. Oh no! I was saying that we should we should have it pour, um, red wine out, and then just find a really high place and put it upside down, and leave it, and eventually <laughs> the world will flood. The the rate of liquid coming out of this is not that fast. I feel it like takes some... some time. I was going to say that this could uh, uh, solve world hunger and stuff, but it's really not. Probably not enough to actually feed everybody. Yeah, the pace at which ingredients are coming out of this is not terribly fast, but it is consistent. My fear is that, you know, it's easy to find the source of a flowing liquid, so people would find it before, like, the world would flood. Not Your problem is not that the world would flood. Your problem is that people would find it and figure out what's going on before the world flood. That's the problem. Well, not my personal problem, but I feel it's the best argument to offer, Colleen. Okay, that's fair. All right, so I'm going to assume that you, you mostly spend the rest of your journey today uh, tinkering around with the, the pouch of many ingredients. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's about it. Uh -huh. I mean, it's, it's a I'm fascinating probably, little I, artifact. And probably making the road stink with a... Uh... And Wait, I mean, hey, yeah, you're, it's, milk. It's, it's behind you. You you know that that doesn't have anything to do with you. Until yeah. the wind turns. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, you're able to find out that you can basically get anything as long as it's not past like the butcher butchering or grinding stage. So like you can get flour fully ground, but you can't get dough. Uh, and you find out that uh, you you can also get liquid ingredients as long as they're uh, individual ingredients, not something. Uh, more complex. Some, like, mayonnaise is out of the question. Yeah. Yeah, you Thank you pretty you. much need to make mayonnaise. Mayonnaise is gross. And you but you could... You all the individual ingredients. The, the vinegar and the, the egg whites. And yeah, you can get all that out of the bag, no problem. Like whole uh, egg... The egg whites. Like that? <laughs> is that, like, with the egg shell all around it? Or... So you find out, if you start tinkering with it, and you find out that you could either get pure yolks dripping out, pure egg whites dripping out, or whole eggs. Wait, what if two person has their hand in it and think of something <laughs> different at the same time? The important question. All right, let's make it something tries that? Next. I'll, I'll try it. All right. Um, who else is trying that? So uh, is it going to be uh, Nava and Relgil? Yes. All right, uh, roll me opposed uh, wisdom checks. Oh, so that's how it's gonna go. Oh, charisma. Uh, actually, yeah, no, charisma makes more sense than. Yeah, roll, roll me opposed charisma checks. And what, what are you each thinking of? Um. Uh, I'm hoping they tie just to see what happens. <laughs> <laughs> I think of um. Uh. Hmm. Like, let's think of something that has two ingredients to see if they just auto combine. A banana. I I, I just I just want a banana. All right, uh, you want a single and banana. An orange. And you want an orange. All right. Uh, you reach in, and uh, the only thing that you each pull out is a banana. Okay, so we can't combine things. What if you had just rolled exactly the same? Then I would have needed to think of something clever. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Can we can we you, take a twenty for that somehow? <laughs> like you try to balance out your individual like will oh, to, and, uh, and power to manipulate the energy. I mean that's something I legit do as a job, so I think it's something I could try to match. Uh, I'm gonna say that whoever has the higher bonus would ultimately have All sorts right. of uh, then uh, then Nava and I should try because we have the identical bonuses. Like you do recall that um, one of uh, one of the other artifacts was called the Staff of Mixing. Okay. And I mean, like, yeah, we have the same staff, but that's not something we know as people. Yeah. Yeah, you keep trying, but try as you might, you only ever get one ingredient. All right. 
Which ingredient? I'm guessing on the tie, it just uh, goes random. Oh. I was hoping to get like an orange filled banana. So I was hoping for that too. That's like, it's just like, it's an orange, but in a banana peel. And it's so, find... so actually, uh, um, in, in all this tinkering, uh, I want, I, I, because Nava seems to be kind of at the crux of the tinkering here, uh, I want Nava to roll me a, um, roll, roll me a spellcraft check. Spellcraft? All right. I think Nava already did so earlier, but yeah. Yeah, I, but th this is for a different aspect. I don't get anything. No, you, you don't you don't find anything out else interesting about it, but you, you, you have a lot of fun tinkering this on, on your journey for the day. I bet that role was to find out I mean, about the negative side effects. What why happens are we if you turn it inside out? Why are you even bothering to get the other artifact? Why don't we just keep this one? I open up a bakery. He did offer like fifty thousand gold each if we brought all of them. Nah. Who cares? I care. I like money. We can make more money with a bakery if we invest our money properly. But the thing is, they're all awesome. Even like this is pretty powerful. You can, uh, I'm guessing like a regular magic artifact probably can't do it. Uh, you know, we don't know what the other artifacts can be uh, misused for. Like, my in-character concern is that, yes, we could make a lot of money, but if we have more, we can make way more. <laughs> That's <laughs> accurate. Yeah, they, they are meant to go together. Fantasy stock market. I wouldn't really be opposed to making, like, che a, a bit bakery that makes cheap uh, food for everyone, uh, for everyone. It would probably crash the the pastry market, but, I mean, everybody gets uh, something out of it. Uh-huh. So, uh, as, as the sun is beginning to set, um, you actually see off in the distance, uh, the, the sun's starting to approach the horizon, you actually see a, a large obelisk, um, along the side of the road. At this point, you're on the smaller road. Torment! So you're about here. Um, so it's, it's a large, like, probably 20-foot-tall obelisk, and uh, so that's like uh, I'm trying to do quick math, like seven meters, a little okay. less than seven. Yeah, meters. that's about right. Um, so you you got this you got this obelisk that's uh, right next to the road, and it's it's right around where you probably actually set up camp. And there's actually a lot of um, a lot of worn ground uh, next to it, kind of as if there's been a lot of uh, campsites set up here in the past. Mm -hmm. and, Is this uh, a publicly known feature? I mean, it's uh, right by the road, so I'm guessing yes. Roll me uh, either knowledge history or knowledge local, if if any of you have that. Mm, uh, nope. Well, yeah. Nope. Uh, I, don't have, I have been traveling a lot, so I should have come across this sometime. What? Yeah, no, that might be What are that. the options? Knowledge How local or... Or knowledge history. Something what about geography? With, something went wrong with the roll bun, so I'm going to roll it manually. Oh yeah, that says you rolled a zero plus four. Yeah, no, that's reasonable. Yeah, I'll let you re-roll that. Uh, and uh, and Velmir, I'm gonna say that yeah, you've seen this, but you've never investigated it in depth. It's just always been kind of an oddity on this road. Yep. Knowledge geography would not help. I think it might uh, be magical, so I go do a not not for other than knowing that this was here. Wow, oh, that is an amazing roll. <laughs> First, okay. I rolled a zero. Yeah, so I'm you, guys, zero too. you guys don't know really anything about this. Uh, you do see that there's a, an inscription at the base. Uh, uh, you can see that from the road. Uh, hmm. It also says... Tell your knowledge there. arcana. If it's... Yeah, yeah, no. It, it probably does nothing. Are you saying? It might be magical. So I do ar arcana check. I mean, if you want to know if it's magical, I can detect magic. <laughs> I'm gonna I mean, do, do this. Too easy. Yeah, apparently, apparently, skills are broken. It's rolling zeros plus uh, the modifier. Eight is my modifier, though. Oh, that's well. Huh. That maybe maybe roll weird. twenty is just representing these weird. Yeah, I'm getting zeros. Oh, but like, too, the, so. the, the that, that is weird. It says one d twenty plus two equals the stuff, and that just says 
zero plus eight for whatever reason. Yeah. No, it does. It does look like Roll Twenty Seven some issues with the. Uh, I think text. the character sheets got updated or something and it broke. That yeah, seems yeah. likely. Just do it. Then it an eighteen. Yeah. It, it, okay, so it's an eighteen for knowledge local. No. So, knowledge Arcana. Well, no. For oh, oh, that's that's Velmir. Okay. Um, oh, it's a fourteen. Yeah. So is this is this in combination with like casting the tech oh, wait, magic I have or something? Taken. Oh, if that's why it's plus eight. Oh, right, right. Because uh, basically, knowledge Arcana is not going to tell you anything about this random obelisk in the middle of nowhere. Are you like yeah. trying to do that in combination with detect magic or something? No, I, I, I don't care that much. I just okay. All right. Well, I'll detect magic it then. Okay. Um, you detect. Uh, roll me a spell craft check. You you detect a very faint uh, magical presence. In this obelisk. Yeah, uh, with that, you, that's good enough to tell that um, you, you basically detect that this is some sort of um, very faint beacon, almost like something that's used to lock on for other spells, uh, but in and of itself doesn't really do anything. Uh, that sounds like a thing for teleporting. Just my guess, but... You, you do see that there's the, the road is worn and there's a lot of signs of campsites and campfires around here, and the sun is getting dark. Uh, the sun is uh, starting to lower. So uh, there's something of a magic lighthouse or something. Yeah, this, or um, it's like a, to protect people who hang out here. Yeah, the maybe. the obelisk does have a, uh, it does have, um, it, it does have an inscription toward the bottom. Mm -hmm. Um, but you guys can't really read it from the road. Well, yeah, I'll, uh, naturally I'll get off. All right, I I'll, head off. I'll roll for staff to check to try and read that. Yeah, you can't read it from here, man. You kidding? Oh. Uh, that, that's still broken though. Plus yeah, uh, yeah. You, you you walk up and uh, you don't recognize this language. Okay. Is it French? <laughs> <laughs> yes, it is actual real life French. In our... Damn it, I don't have that yeah. language. What if it looks like the, it's some really ex language. exotic language? I want to shake, look at it closer. Yeah, sure. Um, roll me a linguistics check because it's not a language that you know, but. Uh, you oh, in that case, I just can't much. comprehend languages. Oh, no, remember, right. you need to roll for real. Yeah, yeah. Oh, uh, but, 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 but anyway, I still use uh, comprehend languages, so I don't need to roll anything. Okay. I just straight yeah, up. Um, so, linguistically, yeah, you, you basically, you you know this is Venarin. Um, <laughs> it's the race of uh, monkey people. Um, but other than that, you, you couldn't tell anything from that check. But yeah, you, you, you cast comprehend languages, and you immediately can read this. Um, and it's dirty. I if he's got linguistics known, I think there's some role for uh, being able to. Well, you actually, um, you, you you're able to read this with comprehend languages, no problem. And what you read is an inscription that says, "To the holy warriors of this land, may you find comfort here on the night of the full moon." Yeah, I read uh, the translation out loud. Is it a full moon tonight? He was very close to a full moon yesterday. You remember that because you were kind of uh, eyeing the castle uh, and the sky at the same time. Um, so it, it might be a full moon tonight. Hmm. Might as well stick around here and spend the night here then, camp. I mean... It's... I know it says a thing, but should we trust a giant piece of rock just sticking out in the middle of nowhere? I mean, it's been around for a while, and there's no, been no warnings about it, so I'm gonna assume it's safe. Yeah, yeah, I, it I've seen it before, and I, I haven't heard any stories about it, so... Here's an idea. In midnight, during the full moon midnight, let's dig where the uh, top of the spire, uh, the shadow, uh, falls. There's probably gonna be buried something there. Oh, that's not but, a bad idea. Let's check. Right, so you guys are gonna set up Wait, camp? Wait, why would that be? Because where else would he bury uh, hidden treasure? So I'm, I'm just going to copy paste the exact wording of the inscription into Discord. Um, just in case anybody didn't hear it clearly the first time. But that's that's what the inscription says. That's the entirety of it. It, it looks pretty old and worn. Um, and same with the obelisk. It looks like it's been around for quite some time. Mm -hmm. But it's only to the holy warriors. Mm. Yay! Yay! And well, got one of those. Maybe he'll count for one. 
What's the obelisk made out of? Uh, it, um, let's see. I, I think it's it's probably made out of granite. Can't burn. Granite. Yeah. I need to get some proper demolition explosives. <laughs> I'm not trying to break it, but I just want to give the thing a tiny little tap with my mace. All right, so you're just gonna give it a thwack just to see if uh, if it's as if fragile it's as it looks. Yeah, and if it does anything. Yeah, you you tap it, and it it no effect. It's it looks actually pretty stable, um, considering how old it looks. Hmm. Okay. Well, we might as well camp here. Could, could serve us some cover if we need it. I don't know. Yeah, I mean, the, you're kind of in the still in the Great Plains area, so it's the road is pretty open. There's, there's I think basically this place some is shrubbery. dangerous. I can find us a good place to camp up in the woods. No smelly obelisks looking at us. There's not a ton. Like, there's no nearby woods really. the The most vegetation around these more plains areas is a lot of shrubbery. Can I find some shrubbery that would keep us out of sight? Uh, I need some shrubbery. <laughs> maybe a little. <laughs> um, but it's it's also getting late, so it's not like you have a, a lot of time left before it's dark to look. I mean, if you want to keep looking through the night, you're more than welcome to, though. Meh. It will be fine to camp here, I'm fairly sure. Unless this right. sign here yep. really hates non-holy warriors, then we have a problem, but I don't think that's the case. Don't worry, you're with me. You, you're okay. my plus, plus, uh, how many are you? my plus four. So if anything bad happens, we just all blame Don. Yep. Uh, not uh, the enough. one actual holy warrior of your group. Yeah, yeah because he's not, not holy enough holy, apparently. Yeah. All right. Well, I assume that you guys set up camp then? So, All right. it. so uh, yeah, uh, you set up camp, um, and it goes uneventfully, and sure enough, the moon does start to rise, and it's a full moon tonight. Um, and uh, how, how are you guys, like, doing shifts for keeping watch, or how are you organizing that? I'll take the midnight shift, then I guess that's when it's most dangerous. Give, was... me, give me the order of the shifts. Um, I want to be last. I'll probably take... I'll probably take one in the dark or something like that, because I've got dark vision. I'll take the first Good. just because. I'll take this um I'll take the second one then, I suppose. Second or third. Yeah, I'll take oh. the second one too. I'll nap through mine. <laughs> All right. Let, Good work, I'll, I think, yeah. I'll let my duck do it. Yeah, she has a safety duck. Well actually just as kind of everybody's duck to quack at me if, Who... if you see danger. Is it is it Raugil who's uh, who's taking first shift again? Oh, I I am. Oh, okay, it's Velmir. Well, Velmir, actually, on on your shift, everybody's gone to sleep, and it's been probably a couple hours. Uh, the moon starts to rise, um, and kind of once it gets uh, high enough in, in the sky, uh, suddenly just a really dense fog starts appearing around, hmm. um, and the fog starts rolling in. And... Okay. Surrounds uh, you and gets denser. Yeah, I, I wake up uh, the next in line, the guard. Okay, yeah, uh, uh, which I think is Ralgil and and Don. All right, so uh, you wake those guys up. So the three yep. of you are awake, uh, and this this fog is still uh, coming in and getting denser, um, and and soon it's surrounding you, and you can uh, barely see your hand in front of your face. Uh, I cast I detect magic. I detect, detect magic. I detect you. There's out. boys. There is a lot of magic. Mm. <laughs> but this all the evil. fog is magic. This fog is super duper magic. Uh, uh, like the sound of crickets off in the distance, it's it's vanished entirely. Um, and and after the fog has gotten to this like critical mass of density, uh, it starts fading again. Yes, but and... is it evil? Oh, oh yeah. You detect evil. Absolutely no evil. No uh, evil to be fan found uh, in this fog. Not concerned. Then. I, I think we know how it's protect how it's protecting people, then. Yeah. Well, the fog starts fading again, hmm. uh, and you're not in the same place. That you... oh. oh, my first intuition was right. 
No, uh, see, this is a, a, a demi plane where it pick, uh, where it brings people for like during the night. That's what's happening. Uh, you guys, the the fog clears and you start seeing this unusual architecture uh, and lots of lots of trees around you. And you find yourself basically at the cul-de-sac at the end of this road and you see off in the distance a bunch of these buildings. And this entire area is very foggy, like like in the picture on World Twenty. Um, but back away from the buildings, it's just a dense wall of fog that you can't see anything. Huh. And it looks it seems to be surrounding. It looks this, especially this... Japanese for oh, in a place that looks uh, that is supposed to be in Britain. Well, I mean, we're away. We're somewhere else. <laughs> yes, but the fog indicates it is somewhere in in England. So have uh, so like it it managed to bring all of all Still. the party members as well as your cart and the horses as well. Um, but the three of you are the only ones awake. Uh, is the obelisk still there? The obelisk is not there. Hmm. Then we probably don't want to leave this spot, just in case it's very local transportation. I burn it down. Uh, is the to... vision still impaired? Uh, so so there's actually a lot of lights along the road, uh, toward toward the center of uh these these buildings. Um, but. In, in, in like, and you can see fine through those, but I imagine if you hop into the into the trees or bushes, then you're gonna have a very hard time seeing. All right. I'll actually check out the building since uh, I'm not sure if anyone's been here in a while or not. Yeah, it's 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 at least a uh, hundred meters away. Um, this, the road that you're down is pretty pretty far away from the actual center of this area. But uh, if if you want to head down there, uh, are you going to bring any party members with you? Or are you going to wake anybody uh, up? Uh, uh, speaking of party members, I wake the others up. So you're you're waking everybody up, Don? Uh, I'm not. I am. Velmir. Okay, Velmir. Velmir's waking everybody up. Okay. Yep. So uh, uh, you wake like... everybody up. Um, do you wake up the horses? Uh no. I mean, you just the. Okay, people. so you, you leave the horses in the cart, but uh, you wake everybody else up. Yeah. So you guys are feeling. Sleep kind of groggy, but you even you guys are pretty sure that you're awake enough to tell this is not where you went to sleep. I prepare them while I'll talk to him. All right. I'm, I'm going to say that you, you actually managed to craft a, a couple more alchemical fires and acid flasks on in the time since. Uh, sure. So I'm, I'm going to say you have uh, three more of each. Okay. What, what do you do with the omelas? Nothing. Problem is what it did to us. Or maybe not did. There was suddenly this super thick magical fog that came in, then disappeared, and then here we are. So you, so you didn't see any people or anything, it just happened? No, it was just lots of fog, nothing else but the fog, and then here. Like, gonna sound, Told you guys uh, it was dangerous. When the DM pineapple. doesn't give you another option, it's gonna be dangerous. To fly around, to see where we're at. All right. Uh, so you send pineapple just straight up to get a bird's eye view. Mm -hmm. Yep. Uh, what pineapple sees is that this area seems entirely surrounded. The walls there's basically a wall of very dense fog that surrounds this place in all directions. Uh, but the area itself is pretty big. Uh, this this place is probably about uh, 300 meters in diameter. Um, so are we it's... in the building or? No, you're outside. You're kind of like at the cul-de-sac at the end of this road. It's kind of just a, a bulbous end. Um, and uh, there seems to be some sort of courtyard in the middle of a bunch of the buildings toward the center. Uh, uh, the, the metal image I have right now is basically the painted world of Arianda. Uh, well, no, I'm gonna Ariamis, start... not, not Arianda, Ariamis, the first one. I'm going to start walking towards the buildings. Yeah. All right. I'm, I'm, I'm send... hoping this painted world has an exit, a proper one. I'm going to pineapple ahead just to try and see in the windows, see if these buildings are inhabited. Okay, so you kind of send Pineapple ahead to take a look, and Pineapple actually starts uh, seeing some people. Um, kind of, Pineapple manages to see to, through some of the windows. There's some people in cots, and there are some people uh, wandering around in the quiet nighttime of this place. Uh, what do and these people look like? Pineapple notices that most of these are Venarin, um, the same uh, race as the language that was inscribed at the base of the obelisk. Uh, uh, they're they're uh, fantasy monkey people. Um, and... It, it seems like there's there's not a ton of them, but there's definitely a good population. Probably, if Pineapple were to estimate, I'd say the Pineapple would say that there might be uh, 50 people here living uh, in uh, this area. Are Venerans uh, known for being friendly? Or? Uh, Venerans, um, 
they they tend to be um I believe they tend to be uh, more on the like the wise and charismatic side. So um hold on. We might as well approach and at uh at, 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 uh, say that we were travelers and we ended up here and uh, is there a way out when or something like that? So as as you follow the road um, you actually do uh, it, the road kind of spreads out into this courtyard uh, and there's a few there's a few Venara sitting around a uh, campfire actually uh, in the center of the courtyard uh, they're, they're speaking quietly amongst each other and you actually notice um, that there's one Venara uh, kind of doing a one-handed handstand on top of a post right nearby. Uh, and he seems to be, like, trying to hold that pose. Hmm. And there's also really, uh, there's also the biggest building here. And it doesn't seem to have a roof, and there seems to be a ton of fog pouring out of it. Like, actually pouring out of it. Yeah, yeah. Fog is Fog is pouring out the roofless top of this building. Ah, so it's a factory. So... Hmm. Uh, you guys, you guys do see these these Venara before they see you. Did, How is their campfire? Wanna... Huh? Does it look? Does it look like a safe campfire? Yeah, this this looks like a well established uh, camping area. It looks like they've got uh, some logs split in half as kind of benches around it, and it's got it's got it's well stone uh, circled around. But it's, it looks like a very nice, comfortable, cozy place to have a campfire. There's no like litter around, is there? Uh no, no. This place is this place is actually very clean. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, again. Do I see any animals like tied up or anything? Uh no. In fact, you don't see any other animals. Uh, it's it's the only living creatures you've seen since you entered here are the Venara. Not even like sounds of night animals. Uh, actually, I I'm gonna say that um, they, they, you do hear the sounds of uh, of some insects off in the woods. Okay. So it's not. I was indirectly asking if it was like this weird little sub dimension with only these people, but no, it seems to be part of the real An world, some sort of ecosystem. Yeah. Mm hmm. I'm actually going to go uh, hit the restroom real quick. I'll be right back. You guys decide how you want to approach these guys. Have a guys uh, walk up and say hello. I'm going to walk yes. up and uh, say, here's uh, some Malta cocktails, monkey people, and then run away. No. That was even more racist than usual. <laughs> <laughs> and my character would promptly, uh, I don't know. I mean, chance that if we stay in this, in that yeah. could suck, we might, we are just gonna come back where it came from. See, that's what I'm wondering about. <laughs> be so anticlimactic, but be funny. Nah. He clearly had this thing planned out. So something's gonna happen. Yeah, but derailing that is gonna be even funnier. No, that's not. I tried to derail it earlier. And I was like, I can find us a different camping site that's going to be different. And then suddenly it was way late and I couldn't do it in time. And I'm like, well, yeah. it wasn't suddenly way late, to be fair. Eh, even so. <laughs> All right, like, I'm back. I we could have just camped somewhere else, probably, but. That might well, have I wouldn't stop you from camping. But well, I, I kind of did. Place, but like, but... some of the characters were in character, in her essence, knowing what was going to happen. That's true. Guilty as charged. So, like, Colleen could have decided to camp elsewhere, technically uh, speaking. Yeah, but I knew that something was going to happen. Didn't want to split the party. Meta knowledge plus rails, are you? Anyway, we should approach them and see what's going on. All right. So, are you just going to approach them straight up, not? Trying yeah, to I'm going to do that. that. Okay. So, uh, you you approach, and you can tell that uh, the noise of your approach uh, makes makes the. Uh, Makes the Vara that's that's dressed kind of uh, in more uh, fancy looking robes. They're all they're all wearing uh, various robes, um, and the the one more like ceremonial robes kind of kind of stands up and turns to and says, "Hello, visitors, uh, please uh, take a seat. Well met." 
Uh, uh, he's, got a, he's got a slight smile on his face, and he speaks pretty quietly. Well, Mo, you're, well, uh, well, I you kidnapped us. There. Kidnapping? No, I don't. Oh. Think he, I don't think he kidnapped us. I think that place was uh, that obelisk is designed to uh, transport people to this probably safe place. For no, what no, no, purpose? Uh, what are you going to do to us? Are you looking? Have you come to train at the monastery of Lakshi Sang? Uh, no, we got here by accident, so to speak. We just woke up here. Oh. Uh, we spotted the obelisk and decided to camp there. It sound like it was... I say, I'm sorry, sir, but it's actually pronounced Lakshu Song. <laughs> <laughs> Do you really say that, Morikawa? If you know, my character's probably going to jab you in this. Uh, Maya, can we get the music turned down a little bit? Thanks. Uh, he he kind of chuckles a little bit and says, "My my apologies. Uh, I was uh, normally most of our visitors are here for training to join our monastery." Look, there was a smelly obelisk, and we took a nap next to it, and then we woke up here. So why did you kidnap us, and what are you planning to do to us? Because he we're gonna fight kid- back. He did not kidnap us. You. you- I say, shh, t- uh, I give you the look. No, <laughs> I I do apologize, madam. Don't make me don't make me punch you again. Don't make me punch you again. Fight, fight, okay? fight, again, fight. I'm pretty sure if you want to leave, you just have to head out of the fog or something like that. So the uh, the Venara steps forward, particularly in between you two, <laughs> and says, "Please let let me explain." The so the obelisk fight. is. Simply uh, one of the markers for uh, one of our waypoints back to back to the main material plane. But in the meantime, you're more than welcome to stay here for now, but we can then let you out. But um, if you weren't here for training, then we must make sure that you're not here for sinister purposes. I understand that there may be some confusion. We can uh, assure do you apologize you, uh, for that. Honestly, I'm, I'm, all, all, all I'm prob- all we're probably here for at this point is probably to finish the night's rest and then leave. Ah, uh, um, yes, that is quite yeah. understandable. Uh, and we, we are on a mission, set you up with that. so to speak. Uh, be- before you leave, though, um, I would just like to bring you to uh, our leader. She does like to uh, see those who come by, uh, just to make sure that you do not have any ill will towards us. That um, is fine by me. If you'd like to meet her tonight, you can. You can also wait until the morning. We can provide you beds for the night. Uh, what did I, you say? You, uh, we're there up right multiple now. waypoints, so can we choose which obelisk to enter the material plane again in, or from? Uh, I suppose so. Were you taking a particular uh, long journey? Do you know journey? Where, uh, where all of these uh, are? It would be good to know. We might get closer to our targets. Uh, yes. Uh, as a matter of fact, we have uh, many all across, mostly closest to the major cities of the land. Hmm. Yeah, we're we're kind we're kind of on a quest, recovering uh some recovering uh some things, and they're in locating different cities. Well, this is right. going to be our quick travel hub, is it? Well, it matters not to us where you actually intend to go, um, but we can let you back out at any of the points that you choose. But in the meantime, please accept our hospitality, and uh, mm-hmm. we'll, I, I will personally lead you to Thank you. Uh, your sleeping yeah. arrangements. I do apologize for the confusion. There are two questions I wish to ask you. Um... Certainly. He begins walking and gesturing for <laughs> you guys to follow. And yeah, as, as, as I follow him. Uh, one, does... Your system of waypoints here, does it not get flooded by passerbys who do not understand the usage of the obelisk you've left in the real world? He does chuckle a little bit. He says, it, it has been a problem on occasion. However, it's, uh, it's the actual entrance is much more difficult than leaving. It tends to be uh, only on the full moons is how we actually get return. Yeah, and it's something about it's, holy warriors. Yes, uh, do you know the history of Lakshisan? 
Uh, no, no, I don't. Not really. Not. Well, knowledge, no go. <laughs> well, this uh, <laughs> this monastery actually. Can I roll knowledge geography? Yeah, so sure. Just know, to like, kind of get an idea of where the hell you are. Yeah, go for it. I mean, you, you don't recognize any. You do you do actually recognize a bit that this this environment does um, remind you a bit of the southwest areas of uh, Calderas. Um, just in the 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 actual like uh, flora and the the way that the land itself is. Um, but other than that, you're not really getting much beyond that. So he, he kind of uh, quickly explains. Uh, there's, there's a war approximately uh, 500 years ago involving the Venara. And uh, many of us have chosen to basically become peacekeepers. We've set this up, set this monastery up as a place for us to train and basically a, a home base. We haven't been needed in quite some time, but if the time ever does come that there is a large-scale cataclysm, it's, uh, it's hopefully about what we can help fight. So, so just became, second, you're training uh, martial arts. Uh, Specifically, uh, yes. Uh, that is that is our specialty. Do you also use uh, weapons? Uh, we prefer to fight without them. However, many of us mm. are particularly fond of staffs. Eh. But uh, we do mostly train in unarmed combat. We okay. find that with our training, that is more than sufficient. Vermeer is now very noticeably less interested in this place. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but um. So oh, uh, I get it now. The monkey monks. I mean, that wasn't intentional, but congratulations. I think you mean the monk is. I mean, that's oh. the exact same pun. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but it's said more succinctly. Jokes are about efficiency well, around now. So he does bring you to to a bedroom I, I with that... uh, with uh, six bunk beds in it. And he says, "Please make yourselves at home. The 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 sheets and pillows are clean." I do hope, <laughs> I do hope, sir, that you are, uh, your group is not needed anytime soon. That is our hope as well, but it feels... hopefully our quest uh, can uh, prevent that. I say uh, he, I prefer he... to sleep outdoors if you don't mind. Uh, certainly. Uh, we actually have some hammocks just outside, if uh, that works for you. No, I'm going to sleep in the forest. He, his eyebrow kind of raises when you say this. Very well. She really doesn't like uh, settlements, I think, as far as I can tell. in general. Now, this is something that we can still accommodate, though. I... So... Uh, and he, he actually um, kind of turns back to Raugil and says, you mentioned something about your quest potentially stopping an event where we may be needed. Sounds like something that we may need to discuss further in the morning. Uh, uh, I probably said too much. Or, um, the person who gave us didn't want us to really uh, elaborate. His face looks concerned. He says, we shall discuss this in the morning. But in the meantime, get some good rest. Uh, you'll be you'll be meeting with our leader tomorrow. Uh, he he leaves you in the room. I sent you a PM on Discord, Fencer. Oh, so look at that. Oh man, secret messages. All right. So uh, yeah, the Venara does lead. Uh, Lead Colleen back outside, but then kind of just gestures at the at the woods, uh, and says, "If you'd like to make this your your bed for the evening, please do so." Uh, I assume that everybody sleeps through the night. Did anybody want to like do some stealth investigation around? That's what I'm thinking. I go, oh. but I don't. I go to bed. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go look for animals. I'm okay. Very so, suspicious about there being nothing but bugs. All right. So you kind of walk out into the woods and look for any signs of animals. Roll me, roll me a survival check. Hmm. 
man. Yeah, you you actually find uh, some some squirrel tracks and find exactly where they lead, and you find uh, basically a, fall, a small family of squirrels living in a tree knot. I'm gonna befriend them. <laughs> I mean, you're just gonna wake them up and say, "Hey, be my friend." <laughs> I'm they, gonna sleeping very soundly. Offer them food, pet them, and be like, "Yo, be my friend, my squirrel friends." Roll me a handle animal check. Uh, they seem annoyed, but not like, not like immediately aggressive or anything. They look at the, the food that you offer them and they kind of start nibbling at it, but, uh, they, they don't seem to be any kinder to you, I guess. Like they, they don't seem to befriend you back. Yeah, I, I don't, yeah, I don't think waking people, waking them up in the morning. I become more suspicious of the monkey people. Their squirrels don't act as I expect them to. <laughs> it's clearly about... not you. Clearly. So how about everybody else? I'm just gonna right. go to sleep. All right. See now, so this yeah, is my too. so this is my first experience sight of demi playing. Man, um, I want to detect magic. And around the place to see if I can maybe pinpoint like its its anchor, its source. All right. Um, yeah, I mean, you can detect magic in a sixty foot radius. So you're actually in a building that's next to the courtyard, and you kind of do a sweep around, and there's actually not a lot of magic around. Um, but you immediately hit basically a blinding amount of magic when you reach when your scan reaches the building. Uh, that has all the the fog coming out of. It. All right, I'm. There's something very powerful in that. I'm gonna take a short walk there. I'm not gonna be aggressive about it. I'm just gonna be, you know. All right, so you, do you walk right back out into the courtyard? Because this is right in the courtyard where the the Fenara, uh, monks were chatting around the campfire. Yes. So you're just gonna walk back out and. Uh huh. Okay. Well, you walk back out and um the uh, the the Venara that led you to your rooms is is not present, but some of one of the others. Uh, and kind of looks up at you and says, uh, "Are are your uh, sleeping accommodations acceptable?" Oh, they're fine. Um, it's just that it's okay. It's my first time in a in a demi plane like this. You know, I got a bit curious, and I can't help but uh, be attracted somewhat to that larger building with all the smoke. Uh, this uh, when you mention that, uh, the this Fenara's eyes kind of his face kind of squints up a little bit. Uh, roll, roll me a diplomacy check. Alright. Oh, okay. So, yeah, he actually takes that in the best possible way. And, uh, his face kind of lightens back up again, and he says, Ah, oh, well, uh, that's, that's where our, our leader lives. Oh. I believe okay. you'll be speaking with her in the morning. All right. Like I didn't want to offend or anything. It's just, like I said, it's my first time around this kind of place, and I was just curious. He he chuckles yeah. a little bit and says, "Yes, I, I imagine that this is, might be a little disorienting for you." So this happens I occasionally. I'm gonna assume you're not gonna want me to take a look at the smoke and whatnot. Uh, no, no. The the leader will speak with you in the morning. She'd like that... to speak with your full group at once, if possible. Uh, that's fair. All right. I just. All right. All right. I. I haven't had a full night's sleep yet anyways, so... Okay, I go back in. Uh, alright. And I assume the, the night passes uh, for everybody, um, unless anybody else wanted to do anything. Nope. Uh, in lieu of that, yeah, the night passes uneventfully, and uh, the next morning comes, and uh, it doesn't look a lot different from nighttime outside. It's just brighter, but, like, everything's still fog all around. So it's more like, a, it's like when you see the sun through the clouds, closer to that. It's so the day. area is still pretty dim overall, but uh, it's still, you can still see clearly everywhere. You understand if you live in London. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, yeah, you guys, you guys wake up and it's, it's the morning, all right. Nobody has uh, come to get you at all yet. Yeah, uh, might as well go head out. See what's up. I wait for Probably breakfast watch to come. the monks do training if they're doing that. Yeah, in fact, uh, you look you look out the window and you just see 
rows and rows of monks in this courtyard, uh, all doing uh, synchronized uh, martial arts forms. Uh, you can tell it's that they're, they're it's doing it's you're, a, 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 uh, you're a man, or uh, whatever that song from Milan is called, I forgot it already. Nah. Make a man out of you, that's it. Oh, okay, I see. I see. Yeah. Uh, a, a little bit, yeah, it's, it's kind of like that. For, for the hell of it, I'm going to say you see uh, somebody trying to climb up uh, climb up one of the large wooden posts in the courtyard with nothing but a rope. <laughs> um, Be your man. So yeah, you see a whole bunch of uh, a whole bunch of these monks training outside. And actually, um, if you if you open the door back out into like the main hallway where you uh, where you got led up to your room, uh, you actually do see a, a tray of it looks kind of like uh, breakfast salads. Uh, if that makes any sense, it's all uh, it's all vegetables and uh, it's it's lots of like lettuce and and fruits and berries, um, but it it looks and tastes very tasty. Assuming that any of you eat it, yeah, I mean, I'm probably I, used to that I stuff. Think I'm making my own food out in the wilderness. Yeah, they it, you didn't get any sort of uh, proper uh, proper food given to you, probably because they weren't entirely sure where you ended up. Yep, I'm gonna track down some berries. All right, it's it's actually pretty easy. These these plants seem very plentiful uh, with their food. I'm suspicious. <laughs> <laughs> they were probably planted there. Oh my God. Grow naturally. The heresy. They have been genetically modified. Really? <laughs> oh, so hey. uh, yeah, at this point, um, it's. It's probably uh, later in the morning. Do you guys, after eating your breakfast, head into uh, the courtyard at all? Or do you kind of just wait around for somebody yeah, to come? Yeah, I do. I'm mapping the area. I'm assuming, from what I've heard, that someone's going to get us. So I just yeah, chill around. Voice. I mean, right, the courtyard is probably the most public place around, so I'm good, just going to hang out there. So if... Okay, I'm so right two, right. two of you head out to the courtyard and two of you stick around the room. It's okay, I like it. All right, um, and then Colleen is currently continuing to scour around the area. I'm, I'm making suspicious. a map. All right. Well, uh, yeah, you, the two of you, um, it's it's Ralgil and Velmir that walk in the. Yes. Yep. Yep. So um, yeah, you guys, you guys walk in the courtyard, and uh, uh, you're immediately approached by actually the the same Venara who brought you to your beds last night. He says, okay. "Good morning, gentlemen." Uh, did you sleep, sleep well? Well, well enough. Yeah, these these beds actually were pretty comfy. He says, uh, "Can I assume that uh, your your party will be ready to meet with uh, meet with um, with our leader soon?" Well, the, uh, you know, the well, other two, I I think are, the other two. Uh, well, yeah, we don't know where um, Colleen or whatever happens to be, but uh, the other two slept with us. They're awake. They've already eaten. They're just, they were just waiting for someone to show up. Certainly, we'll send somebody to get each of them. Uh, and uh, he kind of he kind of looks toward two of the two of the monks that were uh, standing next to him, and they and nods and they head off. Um, and you actually do notice that kind of um, across across the courtyard from uh, the big building, uh, you actually see uh, your horses in your cart. It looks like they brought them up from where you entered. Thank you. Sorry, we we didn't want to wake the horses up, and we approached, and then kind of, uh, I guess we were tired than we thought, and got distracted. Oh, that's quite all right. Uh, I understand. Again, this must be a little confusing for you. So, uh, hopefully, we can get this all taken care of quickly this morning. And uh, sure enough, a, a monk actually uh, knocks on the the door frame uh, to get Nava and Don. And, uh, Colleen, you are actually approached by a monk. Roll me a perception check to see how long it takes for you to notice he's there. Uh, he, he basically sneaks right up on you, and he, like, taps you on the shoulder as you're, like, super engrossed in, like, some plants. I punch him. <laughs> <laughs> Roll to hit. <laughs> so violent. All right. Uh, yeah, he catches your fist and says, please come with me. I say, why? Time for you to meet our leader with your partner. 
Mm hmm. And then what? And then hopefully we'll let you back out into into uh, back to Calderas. That is what you want, yes? I say fine, but I've got my eye on you. He, he, he his face kind of uh, gets a wry smile across it. I punch him. <laughs> All right, again. All right. Roll the hit again. <laughs> like, you, you don't even come close with that one. Like, you, you swing, and he doesn't even move. You're just short by, like, a couple inches. Oh, this is fine. Even Let's go. We still got people. Oh, no. Surprise use attack punching. by duck. <laughs> I have my duck quack at him angrily. All right. So you guys make your way back to the courtyard, and you're all together. And uh, Oh, and I mentioned to him, your squirrels acted weird. Is there something wrong with the, the squirrels of our monastery? They're very strange. I'm sorry to hear that. Uh, if, if you can point out something in particular, we can look into it if you feel concerned for our squirrels. They weren't friendly enough. He, uh, he's got a real sense motive on that. He doesn't happen to have any sort of reaction to that. But, um, yeah, he's he's not responding particularly to that. Um, I say, keep an eye. I don't, I don't trust people who have non-friendly squirrels. <laughs> Very well, miss. So uh, you actually get brought back into the courtyard, and uh, the the main monk who uh, who's dressed a little nicer, who led you to your beds last night, he actually uh, he stands before you and he says, uh, "I believe I haven't actually introduced myself um, uh, prior to last night. My name is uh, Master of, uh, Master Amanu. I'm the the master of this monastery, um, and how, you are going to meet Aranis, who is our leader. She's just inside this door." Um, mm -hmm. And uh, she's basically going to check what your motivations are in order to figure out if we can trust you to be let back out into the world. I don't suspect any difficulties. It's merely a precaution to prevent anyone who may, for some reason, wish our downfall. I can't speak for all of us, but most of us uh, don't mean you any harm. I mean, I'm going to speak for all of us now. We didn't even know this place existed. Like yeah, 12 hours ago. Sure. <laughs> uh, I, I do believe you, but it's standard procedure. Fair enough. Oh, well. So he he opens up uh, the, the two double doors of this, this roofless building. The fog is still pouring out the top. Um, and inside is a very, it's a very large empty room. Turns out the entire building is just one big room. Um, and standing toward the front is is uh, of like a withered looking old woman uh hunched over uh like what basically looks like a fortune teller's ball from a level 20 monk uh, and uh master manu says please enter and be respectful mm -hmm. i nod and walk in so is it a, a woman monkey or a woman woman human uh, you can't really tell because she's wearing these these like very loose robes that cover most of her most of her face, but uh, her hands are not furry, so you're guessing that she's probably human. Um, but her hands are really the clearest part of her that you can see, and it's it's very like withered, wrinkled old people hands. And in terms of sentient people, we haven't seen anything other than than uh, Vanara. Vanara, yeah. We haven't. Uh, seen I'm actually going to say that um, you did see uh, two humans in in the courtyard uh, practicing. But okay. it does seem like this place is mainly Venar. Okay. Mainly Venar, but they do accept others, probably, if they can find their way here. Yeah. I don't worry. People that got here by accident that might have accepted her training or stuff like yeah, that. Master Manu did seem uh, almost expectant that you guys might be looking for training here, so that does match up. Okay. So, uh, yeah, so you, you enter the room, and uh, the old woman uh, looks up and says, Hello. It's this won't take long. Please take a seat. And I prepare choose. an action to throw an acid flask asker if things start to go south. Okay. I, 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 mean... I, I prepare. I prepare an action to punch. Uh, <laughs> oh, hey, yeah. hey, 
Hey, you it's can't. Perception. You don't. That's a meta knowledge. Yeah, that's a meta knowledge. <laughs> I'm, I'm gonna say to you. Notice. I'm actually gonna say to in order to prepare a flask. Like, what what are you doing? Are you holding it over your head, like back swung already, like your hand already behind your head with the flask? No, I or, just got my hand near where I keep my flasks. Like maybe you're wearing a hoodie and it's like in your hoodie pocket and you've got something it in like your hand. that. Yeah. Okay. All right. All right. So it's it's still clearly hidden. But all right. Mm-hmm. I'm not like I, I'm not like clear, holding it above my head. My character does not. Uh, it's, no, that's it meta knowledge, dude. That's meta knowledge. Yeah. No, my character does not trust hers. And yeah, but maybe he hasn't get into fights the day before, so that would make sense. When have you ever called an action to punch me in any interaction other than this one? The answer is never. You. Therefore, think... something else triggered this call that called action. And that would be meta knowledge. So, as far as abs go, my character, uh, when everyone said to not throw this thing into the sewer, you still threw the alchemist fire into the sewer. Yeah, but when we, inter up. when we interacted with the monkey people in the first thing, you did not call an action. Right. Like, why didn't why you call would an you action think there? that she no, would randomly I... attack this person? You want? No, I said my character punched yours. That was an unrelated thing. Yeah, uh, Terrence, I I'm just gonna say that you're keeping a particularly close eye on her. We'll, we'll, we'll he keep has, it. He has a grudge for. The, uh, he has st still has a grudge for the last day where she punched her. In. Uh, basically, I'm, I'm just gonna say that you're, you're keeping a particularly close eye on her because you're, you're nervous about how she may act. Um, so that that's that's how we're gonna we're gonna resolve. So, um, but uh, the old woman is. Punched over, and um, I actually want Duker. I want you to roll mm -hmm. me uh, a yeah. linguistics check because she seemed to have some sort of accent oh. when she talked, and it's kind of hard to place it. And perhaps for you. And I was about to do the manual roll, but no, I had to write it. Oh, Ben, you immediately recognize this accent is probably from somebody whose main language is draconic. Oh. Um, this room is actually astonishingly empty. Um, there, there seems to be fog kind of billowing out from uh, under under the hood that she's kind of wearing over her head. Um, but that's that's kind of not the main source of the fog. It's kind of hard to tell where that's coming from. Um, but this this is a very large room, and it seems very empty with only this one person, this this one woman seated on on this pillow toward the front of the room. She's yeah, actually like, Miss like, Dragon. We find the fancy I, for now. I, like she... I have a question. Yes. When my character knows the accent as well, because he speaks Draconic, it's actually probably... Oh, yeah, no, actually, yeah, you don't even need to roll for that. That's that's a good point. Yeah, you, it probably shares an accent with you, so it probably would have been even easier for Duker to pick on, up on that. But yeah, you recognize that it's it's the accent of somebody whose main language as well. That's a good point. So yep. I just want to make it clear. Like, she's near the front, so she's not centered in this big, empty room. No, mm -hmm. no. Um... He kind of gestures toward uh, some benches that are along uh, the inside of the wall. Okay. Uh, and she says, please, take a seat. Okay, I take a seat to what, one side of Horikawa, wherever she's sitting. I casually say greetings to her in Draconic. I'll have to remember to call these actions in private from now on. Uh, I'll so, say... uh, you actually speak to her in Draconic. Yep, yep. Uh, you, you just he actually is. Uh, no, I speak Draconic. Yeah, uh, well, he's, he's the first one to address her in Draconic, and with that, she kind of looks up and uh, from her crystal ball. And uh, you, you kind of the fog fades a bit, and you see that her face is as wrinkled as the rest of her. And uh, you she gives a very big smile. And her teeth are actually surprisingly well off. Um, but uh, she says back in Draconic, uh, I simply wish to tell your future. Mm -hmm. All right. I, th I take my seat. I do not sit. Kind of looking. I, I remain you. standing. She looks inquisitively at you, but I give her the look. To, to ignore that. <laughs> and uh, she says, I'm simply going to Predict, and she's saying this in common. She says, I've, I'm simply going to perform some divination on your future to determine 
whether releasing you would be something that might bring our monastery to harm. That is all. And once done, a Master Manu will surely lead you to whichever exit out of here you choose. I was going to ask us to uh, expand upon a comment I accidentally made last night, but... Uh... Oh, did, did you want to ask some more questions about the, the portals? Or like the, the, the waypoints, I guess? No, I remember he, he was gonna he was gonna say I'm gonna have you uh, ask you about the uh, our your quest or whatever something like that. Oh yeah, that's right. Master Manu did say that he wanted to learn more about your quest, um, but he he hasn't brought that up yet. Do you bring that up to uh, to Aranus? I suppose. Don't. Uh, well, if if Master Amato told her about it, I, if she asks, I'll say something about it. But. Okay. Well, uh, she. Uh, what I want to know exactly what order you guys are lined up in, because she's gonna just start going down the line and basically telling your futures. Um, we're probably not in in any organized manner. Just we we, we just happen to sit where we are. I don't know. So, so it, it sounds like, uh, so I, I know, I know at the very least that, um, that Colleen doesn't want to sit down and Ralga wants to keep a close eye on Colleen. So it probably goes, um, uh, Colleen, Ralga. Colleen on the end with Ralga next to her. And then what about the rest of you three? I suppose I'm in the middle then. Yeah. I'm and probably then... closest to the door, I guess, because. Okay. All right. So I'm going to say, I'm going to say it's Nava, Don. Uh, Velmir, Ralgil, Cully. Okay. Sounds about right. Sure. All right. So uh, the 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 woman looks deeply into uh, her crystal ball, and you can tell that she's casting some sort of spell. Um, if you'd like to make a spellcraft check in order to kind of get an idea of what spell it is, yes. you're more than welcome to. Just out uh, of curiosity, more than anything. I don't bother. I know very much what it is. Oh, wow. Okay. <laughs> um, so, let me just... Where is... Um... Crap, I'm trying to find the exact spell name. I'm sorry, hold on. Just a second, guys. No problem. Um, but it is... It is a fairly high-level uh, divination spell. Actually, yeah, I, I can... I can just tell you that. Um, you, it, I don't think. Um, I think you did roll a twenty. <laughs> Basically, it is it is a high level div divination spell, and you can you know that's not the most powerful spell for detecting the future, but it it's certainly up there. It's like just a notch or two below that. So technically, it can. It's a future that can be bended. Yeah, so the way that you know divination spells work is that it gives you a vague idea of how the future is going to go, mm -hmm. um, but some people's destinies are less solidified than others, so okay. it's harder to tell their destiny. Fair enough. And she kind of uh, she kind of first looks at at you, Nava, and uh, you see you see kind of the the swirling of uh, the crystal ball pick up, and uh, she looks at you and, and smiles, uh, says. It seems that uh, that that you have a very close familial goal ahead of you. Mm -hmm. I believe that uh, you you will do just fine. I I see that you shall be no threat to our monastery. Next up, she she turns to Don. Um, she she begins casting a spell, and then her face suddenly screws up a little. She like she like her she's really confused. And uh, she looks up and she twitches a little bit, and she she looks at she sees the the logo of Shiba on your shield. It's like you are certainly interesting. I believe you'll find the true nature of your god sooner. Well, that's encouraging. Uh, then she she turns to Velmir next. Yep. And uh, she she looks up at you and. The, the the smoke has swirled again and it appears that your your goals are currently noble enough. 
see no threat from you. Turns to Ralgil and her face kind of her face kind of sours. He says, it seems that you've gone through some very rough times. And I believe a better future is ahead for you. And then uh, finally she turns to Colleen and the crystal ball oh, is swirling a lot more violently than it was when any of your divinations were being pulled. But, um, now I am aware of what she's going to say about Colleen, so I also keep an eye on Colleen. And she kind of looks up and says, you by far have the least well-defined destiny before you. Oh dear, say, she's the main character. I say, damn right. <laughs> I can tell some of your short-term goals, but I see that there is a very small chance that you could great issue for us. And I a see very that the small best chance that what? That you could cause great issues for our monastery. Very Probably. small chance. But it's Seems hard for possible. me to It's hard for me to really be comfortable with that. However, I can tell that there's something I can do that might make this a little better. And uh she stands up. She uh she kind of removes her cloak and carefully places it on the ground next to her. And uh suddenly there's a large cloud of smoke that billows from her till she's entirely hidden. And uh this this room, the fog is just getting denser and denser. And then ultimately uh, this, the, the fog starts fading again. And what you see before you is a brilliant silver dragon. Oh! Ooh. I, I cancel my action. <laughs> I am <laughs> just the, like drop on the floor and make a puddle. I am the no. form of Aranus, the silver dragon. Welcome to I my say... domain. Oh! Yeah. Thank Why you very much. I say in Draconic. <laughs> at, uh, well, at least, at, uh, Colleen, what was that that you asked? I am asked, why do your squirrels act so weird if you're a dragon? This doesn't make any sense. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, uh, the... so the uh, problem is I'm trying to properly convey the air of an actual great silver dragon ahead of you, and it's a little challenging. But um, you you can tell that this this is uh, actually roll me roll me an knowledge nature check. I have that. I would hope so. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just super into environmentalism despite knowing nothing about the world around you. Well, okay, I'm, I'm going to tell you this one isn't too hard to tell, that she's pretty old. Um, it's not, she's not like crazy old, but she's she's definitely up there in years. She's been around the block. Um, mm. Says, uh, I am the one who guards this demiplane and rules it and make sure that uh, the, the monks of this monastery are always prepared for any any particular cataclysm that may strike the land of Calderas. I say, oh, well, we have a gift for a dragon, actually. Is that true? I say, really? yeah, there's this ring. This, this ring? ring? What, this ring? What, what ring is uh, that? <laughs> Everyone looks at the ring. Didn't, you, ring? Get, <laughs> uh, didn't <laughs> you get that ring? That's one of the artifacts? No, it's a bag. It's the bag we're it's missing. Ba oh, it's the bag. That's one of the artifacts. I'm sorry, I'm, I misheard. Yeah, it's this bag. We were sent to give... Uh, are you actually saying it out loud? I was like... Yeah, fine. Uh, I do believe she is. All right, well... All right. Wait, wait, uh, I, that, I imagine Nava is currently carrying the pouch. It was in my inventory. Oh, okay. Yeah, it was always in Regal's inventory, yes. Yeah, he picked it up. Alright, so, uh, do, do you pull out the pouch? But I say, great, she met, I was hoping... Uh, we mentioned, I actually mentioned this to Mr. Amano, uh, Master Amano, um... But, uh, this pouch is, uh, one of the, uh, things we, uh, well, I said we were collecting things, this is one of them. And, uh, we were collecting it for uh, a uh, a uh, we were collecting it for someone who made it. There we go. And uh, that she, way, they, 
they don't fall into that wrong hands. She she does uh, she she lowers her head closer to your level because she was kind of towering over you at this moment. She uh she looks closely at you and she says, "I I am aware of your quest and combining the four futures and the five futures of you, it was not terribly challenging to piece together. However, I did also tell that if these artifacts stick around here too long, they could very well end up as a as a draw for those who may do harm to our monastery. So I cannot in good conscience keep it here. I can certainly try to destroy it for you and some. That may prove difficult if this, uh, if it was truly Thaddeus Bakerton that created these. It's an artifact of world's strength proportions, of course, it's not that easy. You could certainly give it to me and I could see what I could do. Would you mind giving it a shot? Certainly um, not. I suppose you're welcome to. He asked us to return the art, uh, them, uh, the artifacts to him. I mean, deep down, he asked to return it to them so they wouldn't be put together. Uh, this is another way of getting that done. That would be a lot easier for everyone involved. She, she begins focusing, and uh, anybody with the tech magic can tell that there's some arcane auras going around. She's she's trying a few different combinations of spells in order to try to uh, either destroy this or break the enchantment around it. Um, and uh, ultimately, uh, she she comes... You can, you can tell that, like, she's trying very hard, and eventually she stops and says, uh, this is after about 15 minutes, probably, of trying. So I'm afraid that I don't quite have the power in order to destroy this enchantment. However... If we were truly able to gather the five of them together, I could probably destroy them because I would have the proper magical resonance between them all and could analyze them better and properly manipulate the magics that they're, they contain within. I imagine that Thaddeus Bakerton would certainly have a much better time in, in solving this particular issue. He probably would have no issues stopping the magic that he put into progress in the first place. I already lost one of them to a uh, wizard. Well, not so much lost. That's never recovered. Yeah, so now yeah. I see that you have not seen the last of him. We'll see more of him in the future. We figured we would. Uh, we, The map we've been following uh, uh, stole from him. I, I do suspect that you you won't run into him again unless you end up delaying in Riddleport quite some time until you reach the city of Orna. So, do be on the lookout when you arrive. I don't want to sound like an asshole, but since you're pretty big, can you swallow the bag and it'll just dissolve in your stomach? <laughs> she she gives a hearty <laughs> chuckle and she says, I could certainly swallow it, but... I doubt even my uh, great stomach acids could dissolve such a magical artifact. All right. You know, if somebody swallowed it and then kept thinking about ingredients, it could basically feed yourself forever. <laughs> Jesus Christ, how horrifying. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just going to consume raw flour the rest of my life. <laughs> yes, exactly. Well, don't think of flour. Think of, like, fruits and stuff. I mean, it's already past your mouth, so I guess you don't care that much. That too. Yeah. Um, but as long as it's uh, nutritious. But I do say so. That's what a silver dragon looks like. I looks like, given although my even though my scale color. Uh, yes, he does actually have silver scales. Hmm. Yeah, I I went through a few different pictures of silver dragons until I found one. Mm-hmm. So, it says, it appears that I, I do feel comfortable letting you all go. Um, I do hope, Ms. Drake's friend, that uh, we meet each other in the future on good terms. That seems like I, I suppose I'll just tell Mr. Mo uh, Master Amano to ask you if he's curious, but please do keep the quest sort of thing on a down low. I see let slip. Yeah. I already understand your... Uh, I will... Uh, Master Manu should not need further information. Okay. I'll 
Uh, please open open the door for me so I can address Master Manu. I um, I'll go and open the door. Right. Uh, you open the door and uh, uh, Anaris uh, she, she uh, says a bit louder than she was speaking with you, uh, Master Manu. These five are ready to be taken out of out of the city. Please lead them wherever they wish. And she's still in dragon form. She is. Okay. I'm pretty. I'm pretty sure most of the most of the monks that she here know that she's actually a. Uh... Yeah. yeah. Like that's why she got a big empty room for her. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, you could always ask too. Ah. Well, no, I it doesn't ask. seem like she's trying to hide the fact that she she's a dragon. Like she asked you to open the door when there's all those monks just practicing it. Before we leave, I will ask if it's okay if we were to reuse their plane as a way to move around the country in a quick way. Unfortunately, uh, are you addressing Master Manu or are you addressing Aranus? Well, if, if they're both there, I'm just kind of addressing okay, it. Okay, just loud. a general question. Yeah. Okay, um, Aranus uh, leans down to you and says, uh, as much as I would love to assist somebody with as noble a goal as you all. It's something that I can't promise often. Yeah. Um, we can only allow people to enter our monastery on nights of full moons. Um, it happens about once a month, I think. Yeah. Um, additionally, we would rather not have these artifacts here for too long. A single night should suffice, and you're more than welcome to uh, next full moon come by. But in the long run, it's probably best off if you simply take, if you simply yeah. take your uh, horse and cart through. Yeah, that's fair. We still do that. Uh, so, uh, at the closest um, exit to Riddleport. To Riddleport, yes. You, you've got some, uh, got some interesting people that you. I do hope that your journey goes well. Speaking of Riddleport, we uh, don't know where the golem is that we're uh, that we're looking for. So maybe uh, you could help out with some divination magic if that's possible. Or maybe you already seen it in the vision. Uh, she says, currently the location of that golem is unknown, even to me. Uh, it's. There are a few places that you may find it, but never that easy. nothing concrete. I mean, we've done with divination later. We would need like one of its belongings or something. If yeah, you do we bring have... a belonging of the golem, I can absolutely scry it. But it is it is difficult to track the location of a of a non living entity. Mm -hmm. hmm. I can imagine. If for some reason, by the next time we meet each other, you have not yet met the golem, then I may be able to help you out further. It's more of uh, more of the possibilities of the future will be reduced at that point. But as for now, the future is wide open. Of course it is. The Master Manu, please bring them to the nearest portal back to Riddleport. Master Manu nods. Please come this way. Yep. I he leads follow. you. Um, he leads you down a path that's actually uh, the one adjacent to the one that you guys arrived. Um, okay. Leads you down to. Let's the not for, let's not forget our um, horse our our horses and cart. I yeah. wish to ask something to the master. I'm uh, a little bit curious about the spell that brings us here is it like the land itself that's like holy ground with a marker or is it really or is the spell like located here the spell that actually performs transform the transportation is centered here and like is it coordinates or it just goes directly to the obelisk where it's planted uh the uh, whether or not the obelisk is present it'll work all the same hmm it's a matter of, uh, well, that's, I apologize. That's not entirely, the, the exact details are that 
uh, you can transport to any location, regardless of whether or not the obelisk is present. But actually gathering somebody from the location, if an obelisk were to be destroyed, then in that case, uh, we could not collect somebody from that location. Okay, so it's just, it's the, the beaker is the obelisk. The lands itself is just wherever. Okay. Just curious as a... As I'm traveling, finding all of this new magic stuff that, that just kind of goes over my head a little bit. It's really fascinating. And basically, each of these roads brings you to a different location. Right. Uh, and that location is determined by the enchantments. But actually collecting people and bringing them here, that's based on the obelisks. Okay. That makes sense. Any other questions before uh, you continue on your journey? Nope. Not really. Where are uh, other dragons? Uh, I must say that uh, Aranus is rather secretive about her meetings with any other dragons, which are very few and far between. Uh, I'm afraid her? I don't have further detail. Uh, you certainly could, but at the same time, we'd rather you not stick around here much longer due to the presence of that artifact. Well, you said I could, so I will. <laughs> very well. <laughs> Uh, Master Manu, uh, kind of leans up against a tree and gestures toward the courtyard. I am prompt. I am said and go say, let, she's welcome to stick around here if she wants to. I did, I, no, she just causes problems in the past. Wait, so, so are you encouraging him to send you off without her? It's sounding like that. This will only take a second. Fine. I'm just going to ask one question. I, I do suspect that she'll be back. Okay. All right. Uh, yeah, so you, you walk up Darn. to... Uh, there's there's actually a monk standing uh, next to the door, kind of like a, as a guard, into Aranus's, uh building. Mm -hmm. Great. She's going to make Aranus mad at us. Or so do you, do you just... Do you, do you address him? Do you just walk straight in? I'm just gonna walk straight in. All right. Uh, that monk looks up at you as as you approach, and with one eyebrow up, and he sees you walk in, and you hear him chuckle a little bit. Uh, and sure enough, uh, Aranus is is still there. Um, says I, yes, the little I one. Say I had how, one how I one help? more question. Yes. Where are some other dragons? Oh, well, I mean, there are dragons that live out on the Ring Isles, out, out to, the, to the east. Uh, there, there are some that live up up in the, the northern mountains. I know that some happen to live near the Odalai Monastery, uh, near Oshana. And then there, there are a few to, toward the south, nearish to Orna. But for the, for the most part, um, there's, no, there's not terribly many clusters of dragons. They tend to be scattered pretty pretty haphazardly as it were across the land I, I take notes and I say thank you you're welcome is there something further that uh, you'd like to ask before you depart no that's it I just wanted to know where some more dragons were very well little one do take care you too bud and I assume you wander back toward the rest of your party. Mm-hmm. All right. So, uh, uh, Master Amanu looks up at you uh, quizzically and says, uh, did you receive the information that you were seeking? Yeah. There's more dragons. He smiles and says, that's, that's very good. Uh, please, just uh, stand here in the, the center of this road, and I'll send you all back. Okay. I do so. Uh, and he kind of he kind of makes a few hand gestures and uh, chants a few quick words, and the fog starts surrounding you again and until you can barely see your hand in front of your face. And then, at that point, um, there's there's a moment where all the all the sounds of the the nature around you in Lakshi Sang uh, fades away, and immediately uh, you begin hearing a lot of m intense murmuring and clattering as the fog begins to fade again. Uh, and as the fog fades, you find yourself somewhere else entirely. 
uh, you find yourself... Well, let's make sure Fog of War is set right. You find yourself in a dark room with no windows uh, uh. With, with a series of eight kobolds in tattered rags standing at tables with small handcraft tools. Uh, also in the room oh, are dear. three dwarfs who appear to be very angrily glaring at you with weapons drawn. We're in Santa's very workshop. confused. <laughs> I uh, think we have a... two I... two of these dwarfs are wielding maces and one has uh one has a staff. And the one with the staff uh speaks first as silence falls in the room. By the beard of Farrakis, who are you and how did you get here? Uh apologies, there must there appears to have been a teleportation mishap. Where were you trying to teleport to? Riddle port. A dragon? Yeah, the dragon. <laughs> uh, dragon may be part of cause why we're here, but uh, yeah, this uh, we are here by mistake. Um, the one with uh, one of the ones to the left with a, a mace uh, yells at the uh, yells the uh, one with the staff. It's just, boss, we can't let them out of here, can we? And you can see the, the, the one with the staff is kind of, like, hemming and hawing. He sees that you guys are actually pretty well armed, and he's... I'm curious, uh, what do, how well treated do the kobolds look? Uh, they are in tattered rags, and some of them you can see obvious, like, brands on their necks. Uh, these are, these are probably slaves. Well... I'm sorry! Maybe but, they're uh... just summoners, like me, it's their ruin. But I don't want any trouble, dude. We just... Do, do you say anything, or do you kind of wait to see how he reacts to all this? I know that Regal's not going to like this, so I'm using message to tell Regal to do, no, don't start anything. How well armed do the dwarves look? Uh, uh, I mean, uh, they're, they're all wearing... Uh, so the two with maces are wearing uh, some light armor, uh, and the one with uh, the staff isn't wearing any armor, but um, they they don't look like they're poorly armed either. In fact, uh, you see him mutter under his breath and cast a quick mage armor spell. But yeah, the, the the other two guys just have big old maces. Uh, you do know casting uh, you message I think requires a semantic appendage, don't you, Rao Cow? So uh. if you're casting it to send something to me. I mean, it's not a secret that he sent something, but they don't know what he sent. Yeah, they don't know what. They don't know anything. In fact, uh, the, one, the one with the staff actually says, what are, you, what are you doing? Oh, it's a tick. Don't worry. <laughs> roll deception. Yeah, you're going to need to roll me a block. <laughs> Dang it. Uh, can I use bluff? Yeah, yeah. That's, that's okay. the stat you'd use. Oh, okay. A scale, yeah. Okay, what's the sense motive? Oh, no, he's... It's like... You were casting something, weren't you? Duff. Um... I just kind of go in the corner of our chariot. Just kind of slink in. You can, you can see that some of these... Some of these kobolds are freaking out and, like, starting to, like, huddle. Uh, they're trying to, like, casually make their way huddled under the tables. So... Boss, what do we do? Uh, so... Just show us the exit and nothing will happen, okay? Everything will be cool, we will just leave. I don't know. I don't think so. And you call and you call yourself a uh, cleric of a good... Uh, or paladin, isn't he? I, I didn't say anything yet. That was uh, Velma. Yeah, I, I am not a this, for your information. I don't like this. This is looking very much like slavery. Slavery is not necessarily a bad thing. Why right, it's not slavery of animals? I put it one at the kobolds. You... Do you, do you like this? Do you, do you, do you like be, uh, working here? Uh, the kobold like, kind of looks up over the edge of the table and says... Uh, he kind of looks at the dude next to him with the big old mace and... Says, Work here is fine. See, exactly. Our world sends motive. <laughs> you, 
you don't even need to roll that well in order. These guys are being getting the shit intimidated out of them. These guys yeah. are clearly not having a good time at their job. Well, I don't think They're probably that. litterers anyway. I do. I asked the kobold, have you ever littered? How's that relevant? Answer the question. One of the guys, the guy next to him, <laughs> says, enough! <laughs> we you don't need to address him. Priorities here. about littering. Littering is important. You have littered! What have I ever littered? You've littered that. Uh, probably, I can make a point with that too, uh, that one time. Probably, every, probably every time you've uh, thrown uh, an animal skeleton or something like that away because you've uh, killed it to eat. I don't ever eat animals. Oh. Uh huh. She's got you there. Yeah. <laughs> she never in the game ate any meat. Okay. Hey. So, hey, uh, standing around at this, this uh, sweatshop t discussing vegetarianism. <laughs> yes. So, yeah, at, the, at this point, the one with the staff kind of yells at, uh, yells at the guy to his left and says, Go get the boss. And the guy with the mace says, okay. The door is closed, right, in front of us? Yeah, uh, he turns, pulls out a key in order to uh, open the door, and he walks out. It's, it seems to be a staircase upward that... If this was a the car door. instead of a car, I would suggest, like, driving right through. Like, over the, <laughs> over the uh, overseer. Honestly, yeah. So the door's locked, so I thought maybe we could just barge, barge through. He did just unlock the door to exit. You know what? Let's... Yeah, but I don't think the horses are gonna want to ramp their faces face first into the door. Yeah, I feel like just gunning it myself, honestly. Uh, there's just nothing good going on here. So oh, there are only two people okay. right now. Yeah, but two of many. We're obviously underground because we saw stairs going up. Well, if you we take these two out now, then we don't have to take uh, care of them later. You know what? I'm just not taking any chances. I don't care if they see me. I'm casting shield on myself. Okay. Uh, yeah. He, the the guy with the staff clearly recognized the spell, and he's. You, you could see his knuckles getting white around his staff. Look. Yeah. Look. I don't. I'm doing this strictly for my own safety because. You said this honest, is a teleporting mishap. Is that yes. what you said? Yes. But and I'm that feeling a lot true. of tension How else here. Would explain us appearing here. Yeah, why would we bring a cart here? Okay, maybe we look a little scary, but it, all we want is get out of here and not cause any trouble. No, 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 no. I'm not, the, the, this is definitely not something I can just ignore. This isn't something I can ignore either. Not with my. Well, you guys can. You guys can. Hash it out with the dwarves. I'm sure they'd love to talk to you about that. The rest the of us have more important just, things. Just let the short people work it out between themselves. Is it, is the it? guy with the staff loosens his grip a little and says, "Boss gets down here. You're gonna talk to him, and we're gonna figure out exactly what it is that we can do. Because you, we, nobody is allowed down here. I suppose it'd be too much but to you're ask where here. we are exactly." In fact, it would be too much to ask where we are. Presumably in the riddle shit. Assuming there is literally no windows or anything, right? No, it did say yeah, no windows. Mm. Okay. I, I um, mean, being partially that... from Riddleport, is it common for sweatshops and things like this to be here? Oh, absolutely. Being... Um, yeah. Slavery so is only technically illegal in Riddleport. Yeah. So we can't just walk up to the police or the guards or whatever and expect them to help? No. Uh, so vigilantism is it is. Alright, so are you guys just gonna just gonna wait for uh, the, the boss to come? No. No? <laughs> what, what are you guys gonna do? <laughs> well, uh, I feel like it's you're gonna be asking on an individual level because... Uh... Well, if anybody's doing anything, that's what I want to do. I'm not doing anything un un until anyone else does something. It, uh... Okay. Yeah, I'll, I'll pull out my bow. Okay. Uh, at this point, the, the guy with the, uh, the dwarf with the staff says, Hey, 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 hey! What are you doing? 
I uh, 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 blah, uh, blah, 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 blah. It's a tick. I, me, I'm the same. <laughs> my, it's my nervous tick is to pull out my bow and string it up and aim it yes. at people. <laughs> Look, when attention is high, this happens. When attention is high, yeah. you tension your bow. Exactly. It's a well-known aphorism. Uh, exactly. He says, put that thing away, or this is going to go south. I say, just so you know, I don't have a problem with what you're doing here. It's awfully generous of you. Clearly, you're not I the know. one I'm worried about here. Thank you. I am awfully generous. <laughs> <laughs> yes, but seriously, you with the bow, put that away now. I don't think so. Set this place on fire uh, up until you... Uh, he, he says, no, I absolutely think so. Uh, and he casts Magic Missile. Is he? Uh, so no. you take. Oh wow, he rolled literally minimum damage. Uh, you take four damage, and everybody roll me some initiative. I'm just gonna back away. I'm still hard to this thing. Fine. Yeah. You just don't use your turn. Keep forgetting. And he uses his dex, right? Yes. And, like, that roll works, but why not I'm the skill rolls? That's weird. Belmir. I end it. Uh, it was showing up at the turn order thing correctly. Now, actually, um, Rao, do you have pineapple out right now? Yes. Okay. I'll get a pineapple token. It's been on my head all the time. Five. See, I got a six, so clearly if I do anything, it's out of self-preservation. Really? All right, and then this guy... This guy says, uh, self-defense, is it? Like, I was just open carrying. I wasn't aggressing anybody. <laughs> this, this is not America. <laughs> Crap, where the hell is an issue? Okay, there it is. I demand my right to carry open arms. And then this guy rolled poorly. You think about it. Anyone who has a sword here or whatever is constantly open carrying. Yeah, it's kind of weird to think about. Okay. Now. Whoops. Wrong. Descending. There we go. Okay. okay. Uh, Relgil, you to go first. Uh, your friend just got shot with magic missiles. I'm gonna presume this guy over here, the one, uh, is wait, was that was the guy over here the one who shot the magic no, missiles? No, the guy with the staff. staff at the bottom. That's the guy. Who, he kind of seems to be the one in charge here. Well, by rules of combat, then flat-footed because this turn hasn't come up yet. Yeah, and no, then, you can absolutely get sneak attack on this guy. Uh, we up here. And then I am going to, uh, oh, they, uh, yeah, oh, where's the ability? Uh, class feature, oh. I am then, actually, you wanna know what? I am going to go move up to here, and I'm going to attack. Um, where's my tax? Uh, with my, uh, Yeah, that does not hit unless... Actually, wait a minute. I think it's doing the... Yeah, no, it... no, that's one minus one. Okay. Yeah, no, you did absolutely nothing. Swing and a miss. I did say 18 plus 6, and then it equals 2 plus 6. Oh, wait, okay. No, it's, uh, the, the 18 is the uh, crit range. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah, yeah, okay. No, this all makes sense again. Okay. Doing Those rolls are still good. Uh, yeah, okay. you, you miss. Swing and a miss. All right, uh, Velmir, it's your turn. Yep, I cast Ray on Ray of Frost on the same dude. All right. Yeah, uh, he's still flat-footed, but that's still not an. Oh wait, no, this is first touch AC too. So wow, yeah, you absolutely hit. So yeah, yeah. he takes three damage. Yeah, and I also pull out my sword and free move out of the cart. All right. In the back. Yeah. Yeah. Hold on. <laughs> Um, 
And then, yeah. So, this guy's turn. Uh, he takes a swing at Ralgil with his mace. Uh, does an 18 hit. Terrence? No, he had 19 AC, I think. And it, I said an 18 does not hit. Okay, cool. Uh, Colleen, it's your turn. I'm going to step back. All right. Put my, put my hands up, and I want to have my duck quack the quack of peace. <laughs> <laughs> All right, hold on. I got I to gotta steal the pineapple token from... Uh, hold on. Where the hell was pineapple's token? Here we go. Copy. Oh yeah, that ring of protection. Peace. I I All still right. haven't entered it in my character sheet on roll twenty. I don't I don't know where. There. Okay. Uh yeah, it's uh, Nava's turn now. Okay. Uh, from where I'm chairing now, I'm not. I'm just gonna stay there. I'm gonna raise my arms. Just say to everyone, everyone, no, just drop your weapon, and we don't have to fight here. We can. No, there's no reasons for, for hostility. Just everyone, you know, you two looking at the two dwarves, stress your weapons and we'll just leave. All right. Uh, roll me it might be a bit too late for that. I, look, I'm in character. Uh, you, you can try all you want. <laughs> and my character is going to say traitor. Uh, yeah, that's not enough. These guys are not terribly fond of being attacked. So you guys are like, forget that. You guys are going down. Well, uh, talking's a free action, so... Uh, yeah, I know. That's why I got figured I had nothing to lose. Well, I'm going to interject, because I didn't do anything. And talking is free. So I'm going to interject and say, hey, at least let us go. We're peaceful. We're great people, I swear. Everything's swell. All right, uh, you give me a diplomacy check. <laughs> that is also not enough. These guys are actively hostile to you. Right, and I'll Even use my the turn. Because we're... We don't have our weapons on, and as far as I know, we're... Hands uh, up but we're things. part of the group. Yeah, it's there. it's it's the group. They're hostile to... They see you as a conglomerate. Well, I'm stepped off in the corner, so I don't know about them. So I'm going to use my turn to cast Days on the wizard. All right. Uh, so we need to make a will save? Yep. Uh, that is a 16. My thing is... Dang it. He saved. Alright. Does anything happen a on a save? Level turn. Huh? Does anything happen on a save or no? Uh, it's just, uh, you know, uh, do it or it does nothing kind of thing. Okay, yeah, negates. Okay. Uh, Alright, uh, actually wait, did Pineapple want to turn? Pineapple's gonna stay with me. All right. Doesn't do anything. All right, Don, it's your turn. Don't quote it out of context, but I'm gonna watch myself, and then I'm gonna shoot the, the wizard. I can this guy would be really helpful. All right, uh, you're attacking the wizard. You said. Yeah. That that is actually not. Oh wait, no, the wizard had. Uh, no, the wizard's not flat footed because he uh, he actually started. So yeah, that's not quite enough to hit the wizard. Dang. Yep. Uh, and in fact, it is the wizard's turn now. Um, and he's going to cast uh, Entangle on Don. Uh, oh, no. I think that's a reflex save. Let me pull it up real quick. Uh, yeah, reflex. Make me reflex save. Yeah, that saves. Oh, wow. Yeah, okay. <laughs> I don't think anything happens if you save. Um, yeah, so the, the square that you're on, basically a whole bunch of roots sprouted up, but you managed to jump out of the way, but the square that you're on is still considered, uh, rough terrain now. So, does it break the chariot? Does it, like, grow from the chariot? I, I imagine it grows up from the, the ground and wraps around the chariot a little bit. So the chariot is stuck now. Yeah, no. It, like, no, you could probably easily move the, the wagon again. That should, that wouldn't be a problem, probably. But uh, now, with his move action, he kind of ducks behind uh, this table here, giving him uh, partial concealment. All right, Ralgil, it's your turn. Okay. Since no one bothered to... 
Uh, Rigel, we uh, all have extremely different attitudes towards this fight. Uh, expecting cooperation is going to be hard. That is not enough to hit. Uh, anything else? Bad. Anything with your move action? Uh, nope. All right, Velmir, it's your turn. Yep. Uh, so I spend an arcane pool point, make a magic weapon, swift action, move and strike. All right. Pop. Jeez. Yeah. Dang. Uh, so you don't crit, but you absolutely hit. Uh, so that's that's eight damage. Okay, Jesus. And you give this guy a good stab. And uh... see, I'm helping. You are helping. Uh huh. Yeah, a credit to the team. All right, now it's this guy's turn. Credit to team. Uh, he takes a swing at Velmir. Oh, uh, I'm Jesus. Uh, does a twenty-one hit? Yes, it very much does. All right. Uh, well, you take six damage. Okay then. Then he five foot steps back. Colleen, would you like to take any action this turn? No. All right. Uh, Nava, what do you want to do this turn? I'm gonna take uh, attempt days again. All right. Uh, he rolled a thirteen for roll this time. Oh, he is dazed. All right. Uh, that Huzzah. means you can only take one action per turn, yeah? So just reading here, basically uh, loses... Here I added that loses turn, so I'll recheck. Uh, let's see... Days. What oh, it's based on the number of hit dice. Um, so... Four. Yeah, uh, for a few, it takes... No... Uh, yeah, so uh, he, he is currently, like, super out of it. All right, and the pineapple's gonna move closer to him. Uh, Pineapple has his next 30 movement, so he'll go, she'll go, but safe, still far enough, so there. All right. And Don, it's your turn. Uh, the fight is out of melee range right now, right? Uh, what is out of melee range? The, the fighter, the top one. Oh, yeah, yeah, he is. So I shoot him. All right, roll the hit. That crits. Yeah, yeah you roll to confirm. <laughs> uh, okay, so you, you hit. You hit at least. Lots, lots of near confirms. This. All right. So you hit for two damage. Uh, this guy is bloodied now. He's not looking so great. All right. Uh, and now it's the, the wizard's turn, and the wizard is super duper out of it. So nothing happens. And now it's Ralgil's turn. Charge! Okay. Go and... Uh, roundabout path. Uh, can I stand in this square? Uh, yeah. I'm gonna say it's difficult terrain, though. There's a, there's a box of, like, just miscellaneous clutter that looks like it was, um... Maybe maybe materials for crafting. And I am going to go make an acrobatics check. Wow! All right, attack of opportunity. Remember, I get the double sweep out the roll. Huh? I forgot. The um, remember the roll screwed up. Oh, that's right. That's yeah. right. Okay. Specifically, the skill rolls. Okay, well, regardless, he, he missed his attack anyway. He got, he got a 14. And I am going to save a... Um, for when um, Belmir thinks right here, the... Yeah. Okay. Belmir that's me. Moves gotcha. Out. I'm going to ask him right. to move uh, In that case, uh, Belmir, it's your turn. Yep. Yeah. Step forward, uh, do spell combat. So I hit, strike, and ray of frost. The, those are minus two, so sixteen on the sword. Uh, the sixteen does hit. Um, the right. the ray of frost. Oh wait, that's versus touch. Plus you, and plus um, touch regular long because sword. you're flanking. Yeah, so that's, both of those hit. So I can, well, and I'm going to again. You, oh, do I hit? No. Even with <laughs> the bonus. No. How but. the? F 
That's really funny. Minus one to damage modifier. That's kind of mean. All right. Uh, now it's this guy's turn, and uh, he 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 just drops his weapons. He's like, oh, all right, all right, all right. Stop, stop. I won't hurt you. Sure you will. Yeah, do you do 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 uh, like that? That's what he does for his turn. So, uh, Colleen. I say, good job, team. We did it. <laughs> good turn. No, did nothing. You worthless. I say, <laughs> we accept your surrender. All right. Um, yeah, uh, Nava, did you want to do anything? I wanted to see what a wizard's doing. All right, so you're going to wait until that. Don, did you want to do anything? All right, unless you want to keep this going, you're just going to leave, leave these uh, people out, and we can just peaceful leave. Otherwise, we can uh, uh, keep on uh, fighting. Uh, look, you guys can do whatever you want. Just leave me alone. Let me live. Is that the wizard? No, the wizard's dazed. Ah. The wizard's going to be not dazed here in a second. Oh, wait, it. wait. In that case? Okay, well, I can take my turn whenever, right? Yeah, because you, you delay. While he's dazed, I want to try and make Pineapple steal his staff. Ah, okay. Uh, Yeah, I mean, that shouldn't be too hard. I'm just going to make it a real easy combat maneuver bonus check. All right, let me just check. he's super out of it, so this is real easy. Where did I put? Okay, so where did I put my CVM for pineapple? I know I have a note somewhere. But you should have it on the roll twenty system. All right. So it's uh, using strength, right? Uh, combat maneuver bonus. Yeah. S strength and speed. Hold on. I've got a character sheet here. Um, yeah, it's a uh, base attack bonus plus strength. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah, that's what I got noted here, except I'm an idiot. Okay. Uh, minus, uh, I don't know how much. I think minus two for size because it's small? No, it's minus one for size if pineapple's all small. Yeah, okay, so, so okay. Uh, so strength, base attack bonus, minus size. Basically, it's plus three, in other words. All right. Uh, yeah. No, that's more than enough. Pineapples grab the staff. Yes. Uh, gonna... And now it's. Uh, I assume Don's not actually doing anything else, so it's the wizard's turn. He's he's back. Like it, it, he's he can focus again now. And uh, now, yeah, he's he's looking around. He sees that he doesn't have a staff, and he he basically surrenders. He's like, okay, okay, I'm good. <laughs> you die. You guys do whatever you want. Leave, yeah, leave us alone. Everybody, we're out. Please and, open uh, the door for us, Mr. Guy over there. Well, the door is uh, probably already open. Door is unlocked. You, you, go, you go for it. I'm going to say, uh, if if you kobolds want to leave, now's your probably your chance. Right, but you uh, don't have to if you don't want to. Most of them immediately <laughs> get up and just start bolting. Um, uh, two of them actually uh, stick around, though, and say, a couple of friends. A couple of our friends are in the the cages back there, They're shouting that in draconic to you, Ralgil. Um, uh, which cages? Please. This one? They're, they're around the corner. Yeah. Uh, I respond in draconic. Well, that sucks are, for are, them. I, so I go look around the corner. <laughs> them. We all right. have time. We gotta get to our mission. Can't get all these distractions. Colleen, <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, you're good with horses. Could so, you get them to get so out of here? You actually enter the room, so you actually see the whole thing. Um, it's it's probably where these guys were living, and there's two there's two more that are like they freak out when they see you, a new cobalt that they haven't seen before, actually free without any branding. Like they're they're super excited. Uh, they kind of they kind of shake I, the bars I, a little bit. Ice on the lock, if I can. Well, uh, I mean, uh, yeah, I mean, you can give it a chance, uh, give it a shot. Um, try again because that was. I mean, oh wait, I, I, oh wait, I forgot. The thing doesn't. Uh, the thing doesn't thing. Yeah. Oh yeah, I mean that's enough. That's like uh, the 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 dwarf actually turns to you and says, "I, I don't. I've got the keys if you want them. I don't know why you had to." <laughs> okay. Uh, but yeah, you managed to you managed to let these two cobalts out. Okay. Well, I didn't know he was going to give the keys. You take whatever you want. Just leave me alone. Oh, I, I go ahead uh, towards so, the yeah, door in case all... somebody's uh, on the other side. 
Yeah, all of these cobalts have just bolted. Yeah. So, despite the fact that they're all on this map. They're not there anymore. They're okay. not there anymore. Okay, I'm going to follow along behind Valmir. I'm going to After... try and lead the, um. the horse so that, you know, the whole carriage can leave. I'm not sure the carriage is going to get up those stairs. I, okay, then. I'm going to free the horses so that they can leave. All right. Uh, actually, yeah, let, me, let me remove that door. Uh, you guys can get a good look. Oh, wait. I've still... I didn't move him completely off the map. He's he's not there. Hold on. There. <laughs> Trip and fell. <laughs> the ghost of dwarfs past. Okay. Yeah. So you see a staircase upward, and it actually turns around and then goes back up. Um Okay. So it's, Does it look it's like it's wide be... enough for the cart? Yeah, okay. like you, you could definitely get the cart up there, but man, it's it's gonna be a pain in the ass. It's but gonna take. We some... have the horse whisperer with us. It would work. What did you do with the with the wagon and inventory? I think we we sold most of it. Google yeah, yeah. we got like a pair of shovel. Unless you really want to got a, a couple just... shovels, a crowbar, a grappling hook, some rope. I think we're going to have to leave the casks and stuff. Oh, yeah, that's right. you got a cask of ale as well. And the stones. I mean... It's up to you if you want to take the time or not to... Um, but we... Uh, I mean, running... most stuff we can just put in our backs, backpacks. But, uh... Put a little bit in my backpack. So. Alright, so... Uh... Yeah, is, are you guys going to basically bring the horses, but not the cart? Is that kind of what you're thinking? Yeah, basically. Okay. Yeah, uh, Colleen, if you're, if you're cool with that, then uh, roll me a handle animal check to help out, because I assume that you'd be the one who's navigating the horse. Sure. Oh, let's see. Uh, handle animal again? I think it's fine. I grabbed the sheets and the whetstones, then I'm happy. <laughs> all right. That's, that's all the important things in life, really. Exactly. I actually pressed I'll the wrong button. I'll grab the crowbar. I wouldn't Never like the like... A, but it's too heavy. Perko, check your PM on Discord when you're done. Sure. Oh. What? Why is it doing that? Fine, I'll leave it. Oh. All right, no, that, that's enough. Like, it's it's not too much to ask a horse to walk up some stairs. It's a little weird for the horse, but yeah, you managed to basically bring them on up the steps. And uh, sure enough, um, you guys all find yourselves to the right. Okay. The staircase is there, and you find yourself at another door. This one actually isn't locked, though. So let me... Paste. All right. Um, ah. Yeah. So, you guys find yourselves at the door. It's not locked. Do you want to open it up? It seems like that's where all the cobalts went already. Mhm. Mm yeah. Um. Delete this door. Start revealing some areas. So uh, you find yourself in what looks like like a warehouse back room. There's just shelves of stuff. Um, in fact, to the far right, there's a big old pile of things. And uh, yeah, this this seems uh, there's just these shelves are filled with miscellaneous crates. All of them, uh, some of them labeled, um, but it seems to be mostly. Mundane things. What's you know, the most I mundane thing? would complain if any of this stuff would suddenly go up in flames. Hint, hint. I cast detect magic on the pile. Uh, you don't detect any magic from any stuff. All right, I'm not interested. But um, as as you are getting actually, let me let me reveal some. So there's there's a big old set of, of double doors at the end. And as as you do approach, um you do actually hear some rustling of footsteps coming toward the door. I ready my bow and, you know. All right. Uh, now, in steps through the door, 
looks like a, a worker with a barrel. Uh, looks like he's coming back here to either pick something up or drop something off. Uh, he sees you guys, and he he looks very, very confused. Ooh, can, can I can I help you? This place yeah. is closed. You can uh, the business is over. You can leave now. What? Who are you? We are an inspection crew. We inspected this place. It's no good. You can go home. What inspection crew has that many weapons? What is it? What? Uh, no, it's it's riddle shit. Is, dude, dude, All shit this is, here. is riddle port. You, yeah. Everyone has a weapon. He's That's still, how bad it was. He's still clearly not comfortable with this situation. Um, he says, what is, it? What is that? What is that smell? What's what's going on? Oh, the smells just the kobolds. Don't worry. <laughs> uh, and actually, you guys start actually noticing um, it, it starts smelling like there's something burning coming from uh, from <laughs> back downstairs where you came from. I knew it. <laughs> uh, and there's and sure enough, you turn around and there is some smoke billowing from from below. See, that's why the place did not pass inspection. <laughs> I uh, say, guys, there's a fire that started somehow. See, that, that <laughs> is our uh, no prime agent there, and that's our report. Uh, we suggest that you evacuate right now. Roll me a diplomacy check. All right. All right, this guy immediately drops his barrel and runs back out uh, through, through these double doors, which appear to be like two-way um, saloon doors, which kind of swing back and forth. And he starts shouting, fire, fire, evacuate. And you hear a whole bunch of people moving around. OK. Good job. Don't we all need to uh, Good job forever. Whatever. I'm going to open the door, see where they lead out to. All right. Uh, you guys poke your head out the door. And those of you that have been in one of these know exactly where you are. You're inside a wall market. <laughs> Dang it. Good. OK. You know what? Good. This the the layout, the annoying smiley face logo, like it's it's all here. It's it is a wall market, um, and and you it is starting to catch fire quickly. The wall market, uh, from from the basement up, uh, smoke smoke is starting to billow more and more intensely from the basement, uh, and people are like this worker just ran out freaking out, uh, and like the kobolds are nowhere to be seen. You're guessing they probably snuck their way out of the crowd, but. Just this this place is is very devo quickly devolving into chaos. And uh, let's uh, slip into the crowd and leave. All right, that's that's not too hard for you guys to just run on out. So if you guys just run out of the plate, it's fine. Sounds like a good plan. I uh, suppose. All right, so you find yourselves uh, outside of this wall market, and smoke is starting to pile up and find its way out of the out of the doors and windows of. This very large shop. Seriously, these, these are the biggest shops you guys have ever seen. And and you actually find that you're on basically the edge of the city of Riddleport. Um, you, you turn around down the road, and there's just the city there. And this, this building looks like fairly new construction. And it is, it is fire spreading fast. Um, and it doesn't take long before uh, this, this if there was building is in this by. There's, there's, I mean, there's the bay, like the, the actual port of Riddleport, um, but there's, this is Riddleport, there's not a lot of good uh, government services, including firefighters, so. Oh, well, I mean, like, just a bunch of people with buckets at the, at the very least you would expect. Yeah, so, like, some people try, but this, there's a lot of building to catch fire, and it's I'm not going to stop those, uh, dwarves, those uh, dwarves we fought from leaving if they want to, because I'm just going to say, well, let's head into the yeah, city. Yeah, I mean, then. these... You do see that those guys have run out right behind you. It is kind of sad that uh, all this is all getting destroyed. But I mean, uh, these corporate lives were definitely more were more important than. Yes, it is sad. <laughs> <laughs> it's this... never sad when Riddleport burns. So some people, some people seriously try to put this fire out, but it is it is not enough. This place has, after probably about an hour of burning, this place is. It, it's beyond hope. Uh, this place absolutely will crumble. Yay! We did it! Level up! I mean, that's a big <laughs> win for my character without irony. <laughs> so, uh, Less competition. 
Welcome to Riddleport. <laughs> That's a good one for my character as well. But you just say, next time if we ever meet Master uh, Mono again, or... Ambassador Mono. Or Arizaki, I think, or what was her name again? Aranus. Aranus. We need to tell them that their uh, uh, obelisk has no. been demolished. Yeah, yeah, they built over it. Oh my god. Huh. I don't think she'd be very happy to find what they built over it. Well, maybe it's not she there might anymore. agree to destroy all of mankind. Things to consider for next time. So in between now and then, and next time, uh, I got a wand from the dwarf. Does it do anything? Oh, it's a staff. Um, no, you do you know? Um, do you do you know how um, uh, wizard staffs work? Not really. Uh, basically, oh, it's, it's charges. Uh, well, it's it, actually uh, this particular staff is basically his. Uh, it's a tool to him. This is what he needs. Uh, yeah. Uh, basically, instead of familiar, he has this this staff in order to. Uh, basically, yeah. get more focus in certain magics. Um, so so basically, without that, so he struggles to cast spells. I throw but it that, in the fire. No other value. So no. Okay, you just you just toss it right back in the fire. Okay. All right. Well, so yeah, basically, you accidentally um give up by having pineapple steal it. So mm, I figured it'd be a big big thing. So I, I thought it'd be a cool thing to have, but hey. No, that that wasn't that wasn't anything. It still special. helped a lot, it turns out. So, uh, yeah. Well, welcome to Riddleport. We'll pick this up next time. Yeah, um, that was and... a big win for my character because uh, he got rid of some slavers. And I'm gonna say uh, for next time, you guys are now level three. Dang. Yeah. Okay. Which means well, that we my sword very spontaneously transforms. <laughs> Yeah, no, I mean, a building, burning down a building gets you a lot of XP, apparently. Who knew? So, yeah, if you guys have any <laughs> questions about uh, leveling up, let me know. Uh, otherwise, uh, just send me your character sheets when you're done, and we'll probably meet up again in two weeks. Yeah, let, I mean, it makes sense for you know, com like, combined with last episode. Like, both yeah. of them together. Yeah, you, guys, you guys completed, like, a full quest and then a little extra. All right. Level three. That's when we start to become not normal people a little bit. Yeah. Oh, yes. I oh, look yeah. forward to seeing how you guys uh, go through <laughs> some of the stuff next time. So I got to get going, though, because I have to start getting, uh, finish up my preparations for my game of Dread later tonight. So, but this was fun, guys, and uh, I'll see you guys next time. All right. Bye. I'm glad, Bye. My, head, I'm glad my headset works so well. Yeah, it works that... better than what you used to use. Yeah.